and it usually is fairly quick when we approve those things. Uh, we'll approve the contact request, and then after that point, it'll be easy for you to get in and talk to us via Skype, which usually sounds a lot better than does a uh, typical phone line. So feel free to utilize whatever works best for you. There's a lot in the news. More big Bitcoin uh, news. It was just last week, I think, that Microsoft came out with uh, the announcement that they were going to begin accepting Bitcoin for uh, payments for things like their Xbox system. Now, I've never used the Xbox, but I imagine it is very similar to Sony's system where you can, you know, buy games and things like that online and buy expansion packs. And I, I know that they offer uh, old games too, right? Like you can go in and you can buy uh, NES games or Genesis games, like games for systems that are fairly hard to find these days, but you can just download digital copies of these things. So it's my understanding that Microsoft is now on board for that. The uh, story came out, yeah, it was about a, about a week ago that... They're now adding uh, Bitcoin as a payment option for a variety of digital content across their online platforms. According to their payments information page, U.S.-based customers can now use Bitcoin to add money to their accounts, which can then be used to purchase content like apps, games, and videos from its Windows, Windows Phone, and Xbox platforms. Seems like very, very, very big news. That's huge news. Uh, the surprise announcement, which is the result of an integration between Georgia-based Bitcoin processor BitPay, and adds a yet another ma major tech player into the Bitcoin ecosystem. Microsoft boasts a market cap of more than $380 billion and an annual revenue in excess of $86 billion in 2014. Eric Lockhart, corporate vice president of the Universal Store at Microsoft, later addressed the news in a full blog post that sought to convey to a general audience why they believe the move could be part of a long-term strategy that finds it embracing digital currency. Quote, the use of digital currencies such as Bitcoin, while not yet mainstream, is growing beyond the early enthusiasts. We expect this growth to continue, and allowing people to use Bitcoin to purchase our products and services now allows us to be at the front edge of that trend, which is very exciting. I mean, I'm open to uh, accept Bitcoin for my play that is next May. Really? Mostly just to generate excitement about the play itself, mostly as like a, a marketing ploy. I think that's that is exciting. Now I wonder in how many different uh, theaters that that has actually occurred. How how many times have plays or the the houses in which the play is being performed have been uh, open to accepting Bitcoin? May, Good question. I've never heard of it. Right? Is it possible you could be the first? Possibly. Which we'll see. that could generate extra headlines, right? Like if you're the first theater troupe to uh, accept Bitcoin for ticketing, you might be able to send out a press release or something to you know the folks over at Bitcoin Magazine. And I'm going to put it on Reddit. Yeah. I've, in fact, I already put it on Reddit. That and you're tried accepting to, Bitcoin? That, that I wanted to, that I was going to do a play and that I wanted to, and, uh, and I basically told the Reddit readers that they were now allowed to send me as much Bitcoin as they wanted to before the show <laughs> and and... All I got was sort of one castigation, or it was. So you didn't get any Bitcoin. It was. I just got this guy. This one guy said, "Okay, you know, give me some more." But I'm going to put up some pictures of some of my beautiful actors. Ah, and, yes, that'll make so it more forth. real. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's great, and that's what it, Bitcoin needs. Is it needs big companies and mom and pop companies, theater troops, whoever, to come on board here. The integration, however, at Microsoft is only partial. Microsoft did say it will not accept the digital currency as a direct payment method, though a broader integration could take place in the future. So I don't know what that means. Sounds like it just means that they're using BitPay to instantly convert. You can only use Bitcoin, they say, to add money to your Microsoft account and then purchase digital uh, digital goods at select Microsoft online stores. You can't use Bitcoin to purchase Microsoft products and services directly. I see. The page also contains instructions for adding Bitcoin to user accounts. So that doesn't still the same thing. Looks like you can add up to a thousand dollars in a single day with a five thousand dollar maximum in place at this time. Still, that's effectively huge the news. same, yeah. It is effectively the same because you're essentially loading your account with Bitcoin. They're translating that, I would imagine, into dollars at that moment. And so you, you lose the Bitcoin, you get dollars in your Microsoft account, and you can buy stuff, which is cool. Yep. Uh, Wikipedia for a, for a long while wouldn't take Bitcoins because they were afraid of them. And, and they finally did. But they're taking them now. Although I have to say, it's not exactly on the front page. If you've seen there, at least the last time I looked, 
they were doing one of their fundraisers and like, all right, where's Bitcoin? Yeah. And you have to like click a small link that says other options and it's at the very bottom of that list. So there were it's like they're begrudgingly accepting it. I, I hate to sort of give myself away as a as a, an un I don't know, unmitigated, that's not the right word, Reddit reader, but I remember a guy talking about Wikipedia. Wikipedia, their initial reaction to the question, will you take Bitcoin, was so dismissive that yeah. it created a lot of ill will over there. Because no they were afraid. And, it's you ridiculous. Know, yeah. Well, I, I guess, you know, people are afraid of new things, but if you've got enough customers banging at your door saying, hey, we want to give you this money— in this form, then eh, it'd be stupid not to take it. And with Whip and with BitPay, you can always just get it immediately in dollars anyway. As I understand it, yeah. I mean, I've never actually exercised that option with them, so I don't know. I mean, I've tried actually. I've got accounts at both BitPay and Coinbase. And for our new listeners, uh, Bitcoin. We haven't even mentioned this. Bitcoin's a decentralized currency. It is not issued by any bank or government. Uh, and it's a digital currency, and it's sort of the, the currency equivalent of file sharing networks in that it's peer to peer. So there's no central, uh, there's no server that is in charge of the entire thing. There's computers all across the globe running. It's it. the most credible, legitimate money of the internet that there is yet. Yeah, and and they're currently one bitcoin's worth around. Last I looked, like three hundred something, three fifty, three seventy, somewhere in that range. And uh, I never would have thought it would drop as low as it has. Uh, to to 350. It's I never a good buying opportunity. Oh sure, and and it's been incredibly normal, stable for the you last. You know it has months. for a few months. Yeah, uh, at around that price point. Now you know you never know what's going to happen in the future. Maybe it'll go down, but it seems like it's more likely to go up over time. That's my you know prediction, which may not be worth a hill of beans. But my the idea being that if uh, if companies are using it. Bitcoin will be worth something, so it's unlikely to go to zero. Because I think it's, it's, it's got so much cultural cachet. Just that the cultural cachet alone and the scarcity of it will all will will keep it alive and strong. So, in a less kind of technical uh, or less bit of technical news about Bitcoin, because Microsoft's more of like a tech end kind of company, although they certainly market to a general audience. There's actually a company that you wouldn't think would get into Bitcoin. Like, it makes sense with Microsoft or Dell Computers or, you know, Newegg or some sort of computer company. It makes sense that a computer company is going to jump into Bitcoin. But I didn't think I'd see a magazine publisher do it. This is the news that is fresh off the presses as of today from dealbook.newyorktimes.com or nytimes.com. A large magazine publisher is trying to stay on the digital cutting edge. On Tuesday, Time Incorporated announced it would accept payments in Bitcoin for certain subscriptions. Like many companies that have started accepting Bitcoin, Time Incorporated has teamed up with Coinbase. So again, that's the competitor to BitPay, a popular Bitcoin wallet to process transactions. Now, calling Coinbase a Bitcoin wallet isn't exactly accurate. Coinbase is like a merchant services provider. Yeah, you as an individual can go open up a Bitcoin wallet with Coinbase. You can do that with them. But what they're really known for is providing merchant solutions to companies like Overstock.com or other companies that are looking to integrate accepting Bitcoin payments into their systems. So that a sort of this dying animal, right? Like the magazine business. Their magazine companies are going out of business left and right. They're cutting back on the amount of printing that they do. They're trying to cut costs in as many different ways as possible because as uh, technology marches onward and all more of us have these smartphones in our pockets and purses and such uh it becomes less there's less demand that's probably exactly why someone like time is doing that because they have a reputation with even ian freeman that they have to uh conquer they have I a reputation as being old and tired well, unfortunately, uh, it's not its not so much me. I don't subscribe to any magazines, so it's not likely that I'm going to begin subscribing to a magazine. Uh, but its I think it's pretty exciting that they've actually caught that level of innovation for such an old company. 855 453 More coming up. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's 
the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, December 12, 2014, gold opened at 1216.60. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1261.34, 630.67 for a half ounce, or 315.33 for a quarter ounce. That's 1261.34, 630.67, and 315.33. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Hey, I'm Ian Freeman, one of the hosts of Free Talk Live. I created Free Talk Live in 2002 as an alternative to traditional talk radio. I wanted a show where anyone could call in and bring up any topic without fear of being screened out. Combined with our libertarian, voluntarist viewpoints, Free Talk Live is a unique syndicated radio show heard on FM and AM radio stations, coast to coast and beyond. I moved from my birthplace of Florida to New Hampshire in 2006 as part of the Free State Project. I'm also the program director of LRN.FM, which I launched in 2009 to create a place to present the best liberty-oriented audio programs from around the globe. I perform liberty outreach of all sorts and have done civil disobedience, non-cooperation, and run for office multiple times. Much of that's covered on my blog at freekeen.com. Thank you for listening to our shows, and if you want to support our work, please visit amp.freetalklive.com and contribute just $5 a month to our effective liberty outreach. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may join us here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, you've got Ian. G and Johnny Ray. And we've got Skype. Our Skype username is LRN.FM. If you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. And they encrypt your online data. Why is that valuable? Well, because right now... As you're surfing about on the internet, whether you're on your smartphone or you're on your laptop or home computer, uh, your internet service provider is probably saving all of the sites that you visit, all the search history, everything you enter into you know, a form. They could be saving uh, that information. So you could stop that from happening 
by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Uh, unless, of course, you know, you're going to secure sites. They, uh, they can't save that information, but they can still save the URLs that you're visiting. They can save uh, all the Google searches that you enter, that kind of thing. So you can put a stop to that, and you can also get around uh, regional blocks on websites with ProXPN, with their premium account. You can get the ability to privately torrent you can access servers of theirs all around the world, and also you get unlimited bandwidth with their premium account. But you can start with a free account right now at proxpn.com slash FTL. Get a taste of the services that they offer, and then when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, use code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live, and 50, as in 50% off the price of their annual account. That breaks the price down to just under 5 bucks a month for some amazing privacy protections. ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all, and there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Their uh, software, it's free to download. It's where, it's there for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. Linux users, setup's a little different for you, but it's actually not very difficult at all to get going with Linux. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. And again, use promo code FTL50 to get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. We're talking about some of the exciting news in the Bitcoin universe, and I just think it's great news when these big companies come on board to begin accepting Bitcoin. It means they they see enough value in this alternative currency, this amazing decentralized digital currency, not created by any bank or government that's spreading all around the world. That they see enough value in this that they're going to spend the time, the effort. Uh, in the money, you know, because like uh, Patrick Byrne from Overstock.com, the CEO over there, he had a team of programmers who had to work on this project for quite a while. You know, it took like a, a, a solid week of effort on their part to change their website around to where Bitcoin is an option. That That takes professionals to be able to go in there and make whatever code changes are necessary to begin accepting this. So there's there's an investment that of time that you have to put in as a business owner, whether you're Johnny Ray putting together a uh, a, a play, your very first play, you're directing a play for the first time. Uh, whether, I figured I was just going to put my smartphone up on a music stand or something and walk away. For you, it wouldn't be too as complicated as Microsoft or, in this case now, Time Magazine or the company behind Time, Time Incorporated. Uh, as you know, as it would be for them, you don't have to deal with website payments or or whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't know if you just want to leave your cell phone and walk away from it. I know that New Hampshire people tend to be fairly trustworthy, and there's there's good folks up here. You could probably get away with it. Uh, but also, it, it's, it helps to have somebody there operating it. That way, you can walk someone through the process. Maybe they're maybe they're relatively new with Bitcoin, or they've got some questions about it. To some extent, your when you're accepting Bitcoin, you're also kind of performing an outreach task, or at least you should, because your customers are going to have questions about it. You know, if somebody comes up and asks you, hey, I see this, but you got a Bitcoin accepted here sticker out on the front of your door if you're operating a retail location, it's inevitable somebody's going to walk through that door and they're going to ask you questions about Bitcoin. So early adopters of Bitcoin are also going to have to be people who, to some extent, are evangelizing for it. So if you're a business owner and you're accepting Bitcoin, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have some kind of a flyer, maybe right there on the counter or behind the counter that you could hand to somebody who asks you questions about Bitcoin. Because certainly, you know, if you're busy with customers, you're not going to have time to get into the nitty gritty details of how to accept payments or where to go to cash out and all the questions that somebody might uh, inevitably ask about that. You're welcome to share your thoughts here tonight. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number. It's a story from the New York Times that Time Incorporated is now accepting Bitcoin for some of their magazines, apparently not all of them. That's what they're calling a pilot program. It'll give Bitcoin users a seamless and simple way to purchase subscriptions. This is according to their executive vice president for consumer marketing at Time Incorporated, Lynn Bigar. She says, we hope to expand our partnership with Coinbase in the coming months to create more opportunities to provide greater value to our customers. Now, there was news that came out, I think, just today or yesterday about Overstock. Overstock was the first billion-dollar company to begin accepting Bitcoin for, for payments. And this happened about a year ago. It seemed like it was January when they, they plugged that in. or yeah, they, got like, they, they had like a half million in sales on the first day or the first week. I think it was like 200000 pretty much right out the, right out the gate. Okay. 
Um, I don't know if that was the first day or first couple of days, but it was decent. Uh, and uh, the owner of Overstock was very satisfied with that. I guess they projected $20 million in Bitcoin sales and only got $3 uh, million in the first year. So I don't know if that's disappointing to them or if it's something that still is pleasing because from what he was saying, uh, when we talked to him on, he was actually at Pork Fest this year, the Porcupine Freedom Festival, the yearly event put on by the Free State Project. So we interviewed Patrick Byrne, and one of the things he pointed out was that there were a lot of new customers that came on board mm-hmm. because of the Bitcoin thing. And I don't know how many of those new customers have come back to make a second purchase. That would be an important question to answer. But uh, the fact that they got new purchases means that it was probably worth it. You know, they, yeah, they had to pay some money to in- integrate the system, but now it's there. People can use it. And if it's resulting in new customers coming through the door, then that was worth the effort. Yeah, new customers spending dollars, but uh, new customers nonetheless, regular now, customers. Now, will Time Incorporated see uh, an increase in business from this? Because magazines need as much business as they can possibly get their hands on, considering that it's pretty tough to run a print business these days, especially the magazine business. Daily papers and magazines are having the most difficult time uh, in the print world, from what I understand. I found that for me, uh, speaking about Bitcoin and and spending them, I spent them and I wanted to spend them more as the price was rising, Mm -hmm. you know, which is contrary to what your Keynesian will tell you. They'll tell you that that a guy who sees the price rising will refuse to, to spend and hold on to his money. But my behavior was the opposite. Why? It was just because it was almost like I wasn't spending money at all. My my worth was growing every mm. day, but I was taking money, but I was still d- dipping into that and pulling out, but the value of it was increasing. The perceived value now you could have decided were to wait. It. I mean, you could have decided to hold off. I guess there's also you were probably aware that there was a chance it could go back down, right? So that could be an incentive to spend if if it's going up as it as it has as high as like eleven hundred dollars in value. This was actually probably about a year ago, uh-huh. probably about a maybe November of 2013. I think it hit around eleven hundred dollars, and yes, late November. And so you could be betting that eventually, oh, it's going to go down eventually. Might as well spend it now in case it goes back down. That could be a motivator. Right. It, it did drop down to 800 then 600 and I was spending all along. But now it's down to, but I, I don't, it's partly because of my personal circumstances for sure, but I don't want to spend at 350 because... I know that I can spend later at more, and 350 is you too hope low. You can at least. 855 450 freeze the toll free number tonight, whether it's Bitcoin or other stuff. We got uh, interesting news from the war on drugs coming up. It's Free Talk Live. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means cold and flu season. <coughs> but don't worry, HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120 count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the Realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you here to dial in toll-free to bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking Bitcoin to start the show out tonight. Uh, for those of you who are maybe new to Free Talk Live, uh, you may be new to Bitcoin because it's not penetrated all of the marketplace yet. In fact, it'd be interesting to see uh, what percentage of people are aware of Bitcoin. I know that several months ago, there were quite a few people who had not even heard of Bitcoin. I remember Mark throughout 2013. You've got your mouth full, Johnny Ray. Shame on you. I, I can tell. I apologize. You've got a mouthful of lemon heads. <laughs> tisk tisk. I'm just going to not talk to you until you can finish that. Uh, our toll-free number is 855-453. We'll talk more about Bitcoin here in a moment. Uh, by the way, I'll, <laughs> I want to let you know that... You Mark said out. <laughs> Mark said 2014 was going to be the year of the Bitcoin, and he could not be more wrong. Well, what do you mean by that? How Bitcoin, does one determine Bitcoin, that? It was just too quiet, Ian. How, do, how does one determine if it is the year of the Bitcoin? I just give it a smell. I just give it a smell. <laughs> You'll know it when I you smell, smell it. the year a little bit, <laughs> and it is not the year of the Bitcoin. Acapulco. Mark's going down to Acapulco. Why am I not going? Well, I don't have a passport, uh, and things get a little bit uh, complicated. They could get a little bit complicated. You are being very irresponsible tonight, I must say. Apologies. <laughs> hold off, Johnny Ray. Just hold. I know they're good. I know they're lemony and delicious and tasty. I'm just going to ask you to hold off. All right. All right. So Acapulco, it's happening. Uh, Anarcopulco is actually happening in Acapulco, Mexico. Jeff Berwick, you may know him as the Dollar Vigilante. He's billing Acapulco as a liberty destination. And Mark wants to find out for himself. He's going down to uh, the event that is happening in February, actually, February 27th through March 1st, uh, there can be lots of great Liberty names there. Jeff Berwick himself, of course, Angel Clark, Roger Veer, uh, who is also known as Bitcoin Jesus. He'll be in attendance. Cody Wilson, Nima Vidati, Objectivist Girl, Luke Radowski, Dana Martin, Ernie Hancock. These are some of the names who will be in attendance, and you could be as well. By the way, tickets for the event 
less than $100 if you register before Christmas. Hotel prices are reasonable, and there are workshops going to be held all week long, but the action really heats up on the weekend. February 27th through March 1st, Mark will be attending the Unschooling Workshop and will also be there for the weekend. So go take a look at the schedule and see if you're uh, interested in attending Anarchapulco. And you can go to anarchapulco.com. That's Anarchapulco, the new liberty destination, anarchapulco.com. So uh, our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. We're talking about Bitcoin uh, being accepted by... Major companies, Microsoft, Time Incorporated, they're now accepting Bitcoin for magazine subscriptions, which is like melding the old world with the new world, the uh, the old world of print, these publications that are dying off one by one, it seems. Uh, amazing that they're still in business, and I wonder if we'll even have magazines in 10 years. I mean, I still have a warm place in my heart for these things. I just, you know, I don't subscribe to a magazine. And the last magazine I subscribed to was Reason Magazine. And I never read the thing. You know, I would like glance at it and. I, I think there. I, I think that print is gonna is here to stay pretty you do. much. Yeah. Why? I, I just think there's a minimum market for that experience. The, and the experience of holding a piece of paper with words on it. In holding your hand? something, yeah, solid. And it's just the fact is that before the the internet. The, the all of our information was delivered that way. Now there's, of course, m many a, a varied way to get your information, but the experience of reading a book is is uh, enjoyable, as you and I both know. Well, now Johnny Ray, I mean, isn't it possible that you're just old fashioned? I mean, you and I were in our thirties. Uh, we're technically not millennials. How old are you, Johnny Ray? Uh, Thirty-seven. Okay, so you're slightly older than me. Certainly I'm 30, not a millennial. Thirty-four. I'm kind of on the border, like Generation 19... Xer. I'm a proud Generation Xer. And you're solidly Generation X. I'm kind of borderline. You know, there's I don't know if there's a real hard and firm cutoff date. I was just reading today an article about different generations, and in 1980 is generally considered kind of the end of Gen X, but that the end can kind of float. It can float in a couple of years in either direction from 1980. So. I'm mm -hmm. kind of on that border uh, zone. Yeah. And so isn't it possible well, we're just old-fashioned Johnny Ray? And maybe that, you if, know, if screen screens technology gets more paper-like. What are you talking about, like the foldable LCD kind of things? Or? Mostly like staring at a, at a screen shining in your eyes mm -hmm. over a long period of time hurts. It hurts the backs of my eyeballs. Yeah. And... And books don't uh, shine light in my eyes. Well, isn't that why the Amazon Kindle has no light, no backlight or something? Probably. Or I guess there's a version of it, or you can turn off the backlight. And if there's no backlight on, then they've made it sort of to where it, from what I understand, it, it mimics the feel okay. or the look of a printed page. I'm, I am not conversant with the state of the art. I in haven't. This. Either, I've never seen it personally. I've just read about it. I've seen pictures of it. I don't know if that's a different feeling than actually seeing it. You know, in in real life, that but. seems like a problem that is that is eminently solvable. To get rid of the the light problem that you're talking about, yes, the, the, kind of the fatigue, I guess. Yeah, that comes with that. Yeah. So I think it's it, that may be Mark or that Mark Johnny Ray. Uh, <laughs> it may be that you and I are just kind of old fashioned here, like because I can I can I know where you're coming from. Like a magazine, there's not really anything in a magazine that I care enough about. I don't go to online versions of magazines, and I don't go to you know to read the physical versions of them. But uh, The Onion, I did subscribe to The Onion. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that would make s probably be the, the most recent thing to which I have subscribed that is a print item, something that you can hold in your hand. But The Onion stopped doing that. That's right, they did. And those onions, reading The Onion on paper was a joy. I loved it, and I, I would still love it. If I could subscribe to The Onion, because there still are, from what I understand, some of the, the local printed versions of The Onion, like... Uh, in New York City or Chicago, D.C., some of the bigger cities. I think Austin even has it. But some cities have the onion available in print in like a newsstand kind of format. You go and you, you know, pull down the door and you grab the onion and Wonderful. walk away, which is a cool experience. Uh, you can't get that in most places. You have to be in certain cities. But what happened, I think it was like a, a solid year and a half, maybe two years ago, the onion decided they were going to halt all printing operations focus only on their web stuff, but that they would still allow for partnerships with major companies who have printing their own printer operations in different cities. So the Chicago Tribune, for inst instance, I think is one of them that does it. Uh, they can print their own onion. You know, they can they have like a sales team that can sell advertisements 
for local stuff that's happening in Chicago. They can write articles, uh, sort of, they can hire an Onion writer to write about Chicago things so they can sort of customize it to their local area. Yeah, yeah. I guess for having, you know, a relatively small audience that was spread all across the country was very expensive to service. Well, right. Um, so when I was, I was a mail by mail subscriber, right? So they would send me the onion in the mail and they, they stopped offering that that service. If if some, if like the Chicago Tribune or whoever it is that's doing the local stuff would offer a mailing service, I'd pay for it because it's nice to have the onion sitting next to the toilet, mm-hmm. you know, that, which is where I would, <laughs> where I would keep it because the only time I would ever actually read anything is when it was by the toilet. So I think that we might be a little uh, old-fashioned, Johnny. Ray. It w- would be interesting to hear the opinions of millennials as to whether or not they have any value whatsoever for a printed book, uh, a magazine, or a newspaper. I- I'd be fascinated to, to get the opinions of millennials on this because I suspect they would shift away from that desire. There may be some kind of old-fashioned millennials who were really raised in a household that had an appreciation for things like newspapers and and that sort of thing. But, but oh, wait, are millennials in the story that we're talking about? Time, or are you just appealing to a hot de- demo? I don't know. They're not mentioning millennials in here. Okay. If that's what you're wondering. You, no, this is just a just kind of a generic business story about how Time's accepting Bitcoin. Uh huh. Which okay. is cool. Uh, I just find myself wondering, you know, is it really going to affect things for them? I hope it does. I mean, I don't want to see, I don't want to see the companies go out of business. It's just that's what's happening. Magazine printers are having a real tough time. The companies that are doing the printing, uh, you know, they're not seeing as much business. So, like the major print house that Time would hire to do the printing for them and shipping them out and all that, they're not getting as much business. Their business is down. They're probably laying people off. Yeah, I guess the whole infrastructure, the whole industry yeah. and everything related is it's hurting, revolutionizing itself or has to, to to live. Well, that's the thing. These old companies, you know, like the New York Times, their way of revolutionizing is to just cut costs. They're not revolutionizing anything, but for time to accept Bitcoin shows uh, the ability to innovate. And it may be, is it too little too late? It's Free Talk Live. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. Are you? searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa stop searching with easy dns you found a keeper easy dns does it all domain names web hosting and managed wordpress hosting easy dns stands up for your internet freedom and with servers in canada they do not cooperate with the nsa go to easydns.com you'll love their services or get a full refund they guarantee it and they accept bitcoin that's easydns.com The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. If you're looking for work, there's a piece of paper more important than your resume. It's the cover letter attached if you're snail mailing or the email to which you attach your resume. Make it four short paragraphs. Paragraph one, say that you're applying for work. The person you're sending to gets a ton of mail about all sorts of things. If you have a password, that's your first sentence. Tom Nelson tells me you and I should meet. 
Paragraph two, what you do and how that relates to the opening. Be as specific as possible. Paragraph three, why you want this particular job. I'm originally from Boston, so I know the market well. I have family and friends in the area, so this would be a homecoming for me. Paragraph four, unless the job posting stipulates no calls, and I will call you to follow up. Thank you in advance for your time. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, you've got Ian here. And Johnny Ray. And don't forget, you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And it is the gift-giving season, and it's not too late to take care of your gift purchasing that you might be considering. Consider... For especially for the younger people in your family, in Freedom's Cause, it is an audio theater piece. Now, Johnny Ray, you do actual theater piece uh, pieces. You perform on stage. Are you familiar at all with uh, with audio theater in in that world? Sure. Yeah, radio theater. Yeah. Um, I, I I love it. I, my you don't mom, hear it very often these days, though. No, you're right. You hear music or news. Music or talk radio. My mom grew up. My mom grew up listening to the Goon Show on BBC. Which Was that radio theater. Yep, radio theater had Peter Sellers and Phil Hendry is the greatest radio theater oh, uh, yeah. uh, mind I think that has ever uh, been on the radio. So you can get now this isn't on the radio; it's audio theater. It's CDs. Uh, you get a couple CDs. It's over two hours in length. Uh, this is you know feature length basically, and it's actually got some actors you might recognize from movies and TV like Joanne Froggett from Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd of Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keynes from Chronicles of Narnia, and James Cosmo from Braveheart. It's called In Freedom's Cause, and it is the story of William Wallace, one of the greatest stories of the struggle for freedom in recorded history. It's like Braveheart, but historically accurate. Uh, children in your life will love it. It uh, has a study guide, and it's a crash course in the struggle for freedom. Go to infreedomscause.com, and you can get a special offer just for Free Talk Live listeners. Use coupon code FTL, and you'll get the family four-pack of CDs for half price. So great way to give multiple kids in your family uh, a gift that has a freedom theme to it. Infreedomscause.com. Coupon code is FTL. That's infreedomscause.com. By the way, the production level is very, very good. Not only do they have good actors, but the, the foley, that is the sound effects, are excellent. And the soundtrack itself, the score, was created just for In Freedom's Cause. So it's very original. Infreedomscause.com, coupon code FTL. So toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. We're talking about an innovator in an unlikely place, Time Incorporated. The same company that publishes Fortune magazine as well as People magazine, Sports Illustrated, uh, these are some big names uh, in the magazine world. And they're now accepting Bitcoin for some, some of, of their, their subscriptions. So you can pay with Bitcoin for Fortune, Health, 
and this whole this old house and travel and leisure magazines. You cannot pay with Bitcoin for People, Sports Illustrated, and Food and, and Wine. And those four magazines all seem like magazines targeted at the middle-aged and older. Isn't that interesting? Very, it's fascinating. Many companies have been allowing users to transact with Bitcoin that have been rooted in technology. This is according to the New York Times, who ironically is laying off 100 of their staffers apparently this week. <laughs> Uh, including Overstock, Dell, and Expedia, Time's decision is a sign that even once traditional businesses are now seeing opportunity in Bitcoin. Digital currency, for instance, would give consumers a faster way to pay for subscriptions. Bitcoin transactions also cost merchants less than credit card payments in processing fees. Now, if you think about it, that makes sense uh, for a company, especially a company that's having a tough time. I'm presuming they're having a tough time because most magazine, uh, magazine companies are either you know losing money or they're going out of business it seems like so i'm just i'm jumping to the conclusion that time magazine is suffering from the same problems that the entire magazine industry and the print business uh, is and if you are having trouble meeting you know making ends meet as a business owner then it makes sense to start accepting business or bitcoin because you don't have to pay out 3% of every transaction to uh, you know the credit card networks mm -hmm. when you spend when somebody spends $100 on a magazine subscription with their credit card the company's only taken $97 out of that you know 3%s going to the uh, it's going to the credit card company, and and you know you start adding that three percent up over a hundred thousand subscribers, and you're talking about some money. You know you might be able to hire another staffer or cut costs somewhere if you actually started taking in Bitcoin payments, where zero to one percent is going to you know the overhead costs. So that adds up. Sure, sure. Now, Ian, if you mentioned this before, I apologize, but do you subscribe to any news? To any online news sources? No, I do not. No, nor do I. But I find paywalls. That seems to be what, like, the New York Times is doing, and some That's of correct. the some of the giants of the print days are putting up paywalls on their websites. I have no patience for that because everything because it's information is free everywhere else. Well, we're spoiled with that, Johnny Ray, and uh, the the people that are behind the New York Times and Rupert Murdoch, who is of course the owner of a lot of major media out there, they really want you to to go through the paywall process. But of course, as you pointed out, you can usually acquire the same information from elsewhere on the internet. Why would you want to pay for the New York Times variant of that information? Just like goblin juice. They do, they don't you drink the goblin juice, you don't have to buy a Halloween costume, but they don't want you to know about the goblin juice. <laughs> Brian Armstrong, the chief executive and co-founder of Coinbase, said in a statement, quote, for a major publisher like Time to embrace Bitcoin sends an important message to both its readers and to the broader media community. In a separate post, Coinbase said that uh, Time Incorporated's decision to accept Bitcoin would help the publishing industry understand and explore new business models that can be enabled with Bitcoin, including micropayments. The idea is that consumers could one day pay for individual articles or videos with Bitcoin. Now, the idea there with the micropayments is that you can't do a micropayment with credit cards. And the reason for that is, you know, again, there's that percentage, not just a percentage that gets taken out, but usually on every credit card transaction, there's a per transaction fee or there's a batch fee or something like that. So in a lot of cases, you're looking at a 10 cent minimum fee on every credit card transaction. So 10 cents plus the 3% is in a lot of cases what you're dealing with. And if you want to make some sort of micropayment deal where you pay five cents for an article, no credit card company is going to want to process that transaction because they can't make any money off of it. Right. With Bitcoin, you could actually do something like that. But then again, who really wants to spend the time to dig into their Bitcoin wallet to send a five cents worth of Bitcoin transaction to get access to an article? I still don't know how popular that idea would be, but it's out there. You know, some people think that it's a good idea. There's some somebody for whatever reason might need to, to to have some kind of serial donation thing, and they set up their own automated thing that does it. That you know, a program that sends out these tiny transactions and mass that makes it and easy. And they would still need something, but they still needed to accomplish that particular mission. Time Incorporated, which says it reaches 130 million consumers each month, has been criticized for holding on too strongly to its past and accepting Bitcoin may be part of the company's attempt to be seen as hipper and younger. Although Bitcoin will probably not solve the magazine industry's wider problems, including declining subscriptions and sliding revenue, 
Time Incorporated's decision is obviously already generating publicity. So good for them. I, I really do hope that it works out for them. And again, this is this article is being featured in the New York Times, which is right now uh, in the news yet again for more cost-cutting measures, which is what we're seeing out of these old dinosaur companies. They don't know how to deal with the new world. They're not a new world company. They're not, you know, they were founded 100 plus years ago in a lot of these cases. A lot of these old print companies go back mm -hmm. for, you know, from before uh, 1900. And I know that uh, here in New Hampshire, there's a, or here in Keene, where we're doing the show from, the newspaper was founded in the 1700s, if I'm not mistaken. So it's hard for, it's hard for older companies to really see the vision of, of what's on the horizon and, uh, and be quick to embrace it. And so what you end up seeing instead is cost cutting where, oh, OK, we're spending too much money. We've got to bring our costs down. Let's take an axe to the newsroom or, you know, get get rid of these employees uh -huh. as though that's somehow going to result in future success for the company. While it may help tread water uh, for a short period of time. It uh, isn't necessarily going to take the company to the next level, right? Because you're you're cutting people out. The wh whoever it would be that would be creating the innovative ideas is probably not working for you now because you might have fired them. Of course, you're also firing people who've been there for a long time. Maybe they'll hire some upstarts, some innovators, some some newbies. But usually, if somebody comes in with a new idea that threatens the old way of doing things, the people who are at the top who've been there for 40 years or 50 years or whatever, it's hard for them to really absorb those ideas. Mm -hmm. and really embrace them so that's what we're seeing around uh happening around the print industry yeah um i remember my dad telling me a long time ago that when often when new ceos come in and they and they start firing people left and right that was always a sign that the stock price was about to rise and i guess people back i guess people just need to clean house every now and then sometimes it works i guess sometimes it doesn't We've got a lot to talk about here tonight. You can, of course, take control of the airwaves. There's an interesting story in the L.A. Times, and it's not just in the Times, but uh, I had, I'd been hearing about this. Congress has ended the federal government's ban on medical marijuana. I wanted to add that I ripped off the goblin juice from Phil Hendry. That was a good one. All right, more coming back here in moments. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Plus, a disturbing decision from the Supreme Court about the police. That's all on the way. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. There's more coming up. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. So these deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, December 16th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,199, silver around $16.23, and Bitcoin is trading around $342.68. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Bee is sponsored by eFoods Direct Storable Foods. With a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day, even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bee or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Bee to get a 10% off listener discount. In the news, jailed whistleblower Chelsea Manning has been tortured. That's the claim made by Welsh relatives of a former United States Army soldier sentenced to 35 years behind bars for providing leak seeker cables to WikiLeaks. According to Wales Online, Manning's mother and aunt claim that Manning was subjected to being stripped naked and kept in solitary confinement. Some of these same techniques outlined in the recently released report regarding CIA torture. The relative spoke as the demand grows for an inquiry into what British authorities knew regarding the CIA's interrogation used against so-called enemy combatants. On Monday, Texas State Representative Joe Moody introduced a bill that would reduce the penalties for those found in possession of small amounts of cannabis. Texans found with up to an ounce would receive a civil fine of $100. Heather Fazio is the Texas political director for the Marijuana Policy Project which supports the bill introduced by the El Paso Democrat. The bill is designed to reduce penalties associated with marijuana possession of under one ounce. It means no jail time, no criminal record, and no arrest for those with one ounce or less of marijuana in Texas. A big change that will hopefully reduce the collateral damage created by the war on drugs. The proposed legislation has also received the support of the ACLU of Texas and Republicans against marijuana prohibition. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support for the Liberty Beat also comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, December 16th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has condemned the Intelligence Authorization Act of 2015 for supporting the status quo and massive loopholes that will allow the egregious retention and sharing of innocent users' communication. The U.S. House of Representatives passed the measure last week. The EFF says the bill does not go far enough to curtail spying. The Supreme Court of Canada has ruled that police can search cell phones of suspects without a warrant. The court found that law enforcement officials can go through cell phones if the search relates to the arrest and the police keep detailed notes. The decision was split 4-3, to three, with the dissenting judges arguing that cell phones and personal devices need to be protected. Lawyers with Sony Pictures Entertainment are demanding that news organizations stop publishing details of leaked company files obtained by hackers. Attorney David Boyce says Sony's stolen information should be returned or destroyed immediately. Boyce said that Sony does not consent to possession, review, copying, dissemination, publication, uploading, downloading, or making any use of the stolen information. The leaked info includes financial records, employment files, code names for actors, and gossip between Hollywood executives about President Obama and celebrities. The Liberty Beat is made possible through the support of Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? Well, the Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit libertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, December 16th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you to spread liberty with a smile. 
as Sao Paulo struggled to dig out after last week's devastating earthquake. I'm just praying. I'm just praying and helping. One group was left with no one to care for them. There is nowhere for these homeless dogs to go. There is no food to give them. There is no clean water. These dogs are going to starve to death. I have to do the humane thing. I have to put these dogs down. O'Brady Shaw is the only journalist compassionate enough to do what has to be done. Put down 50 or 60 dogs today. I didn't want to. Let me help you! But their fate would have been much worse if I hadn't have done it. It's better this way. O'Brady Shaw goes where other reporters won't and does the jobs other reporters can't. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Gut Check with O'Brady Shaw. Live from Sao Paulo. Tomorrow night, only on the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free to bring up anything you'd like. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to reach us that way if you like. Uh, lots of stuff in the news to talk about, including big, big news from the war on drugs. Maybe, maybe just one of the chapters in this insane war on drugs is coming to a close. And when I'm talking about Johnny Ray, um, and by the way, Ian and Johnny Ray in the studio with you tonight, uh, what I'm talking about is the medical marijuana side of things, which of course has been over the years, the last couple of decades, has been whittled away uh, by the different state governments that have passed medical marijuana programs. California, of course, being the first in, I think it was 1996, with Proposition 215 to legalize medicinal marijuana there. It has, you know, of course, spread up and down the West Coast and spread to states all across the United States. Like um, a virus. And a, a very good kind of virus, all the way to, uh, you know, as, as states like Montana and uh, New Hampshire as well uh, had passed a, a fairly weak medical marijuana program a couple of years ago. We're still waiting for the full implementation of that. They have yet to actually open the doors of any of the state-approved medical facilities, of which New Hampshire will only be allowed to have four. So there's a, a lot of problems with the one that we have here in New Hampshire, but it's there. It's better than nothing. And uh, anything that can decriminalize any amount of use of this particular plant, uh, I support. You know, I, I begrudgingly supported it because I'd rather see, uh, I'd rather not see medical users of marijuana being arrested. And I think that uh, th this will lead to fewer arrests uh, of people who are sick. And I think that that's a good thing. Obviously, I'd like to see full on legalization or full decriminalization of it. But one of the objections that you'll hear from people in state governments about why they don't think that we should have medical ca cannabis or legalized cannabis or whatever is that, well, we could change the state law, but there's still federal law. And, of course, there's years of stories uh, from California and other places where you'll read about the DEA going into these legal shops where they are completely legal under the California system to sell medical marijuana. The DEA will go in with guns, point them at the staff, Raid the place, take all of the plants, take all of the pot, take all of the cash from the cash register in the safe, and then not charge anyone. The the, the, I, I, wasn't it the DEA that executed an, a nationwide operation that you yourself bore witness to in Keene this past year? I did. Uh, now, that was different. That wasn't marijuana related. That was uh, some sort of drug paraphernalia crackdown uh -huh. slash uh, they, they were also going after the synthetic cannabis and synthetic various bath salts, as they've been called, uh, which was funny because that store didn't have the synthetic bath salts or synthetic cannabis, but they went ahead and raided and stole over $100,000 worth of their inventory anyway. Uh, but yes, I did see, uh, I did observe that happen, and uh, if you want to see the video from that, you can search for DEA Keen, I think, on Facebook, and then it'll come up. And the local police didn't, didn't um, it explicitly did not mind were on record as not minding that the feds were coming in and stealing from... Oh, they helped them. The okay. Lo the local police actually uh, guarded the front door okay. throughout the entirety of the multiple-hour-long raid, uh, which you know essentially was just a ransacking 
of this this poor man's story. Still open, by the way. So they were there to serve and protect the federal agents yeah. who were doing their job that day. Yeah, Excellent. exactly. Exactly. So here's the, the good news, which is kind of a shock uh, out of the federal government, because on this on the same uh at the same time, the federal government is looking to block D.C. from legalizing pot. So there's a little bit of good news and a little bit of bad news in the in the world of the federal government's enforcement apparatus about marijuana. This story from the L.A. Times, tucked in deep inside the 1,603-page federal spending measure, is a provision that effectively ends the federal government's prohibition on medical marijuana and signals a major shift in drug policy. The bill's passage over the weekend marks the first time Congress has approved nationally significant legislation backed by legalization advocates. It brings almost to a close two decades of tension between the states and Washington over medical use of marijuana. Under the provision, states where medical pot is legal would no longer need to worry about federal drug agents raiding retail operations. Agents would be prohibited from doing so. Now, this is apparently a spending bill, some sort of federal spending bill where they buried this deep in there. Uh, The Obama administration has largely followed that rule since last year as a matter of policy, but the measure approved as part of the spending bill, which President Obama plans to sign this week, will codify it as a matter of law. Pot advocates had lobbied Congress to embrace the administration's policy, which they warned was vulnerable to revision under a less tolerant future administration. More important from the standpoint of activists, Congress action marked the emergence of a new alliance in medical or in marijuana politics. Republicans are taking a prominent role in backing states' rights to allow the use of a drug that the federal government still classifies officially as more dangerous than cocaine. This is a victory for so many, said the measure's co-author, Republican Representative Dana Rohrbacher of Costa Mesa. The measure's approval, he said, represents the first time in decades that the federal government has curtailed its oppressive prohibition of marijuana. That's a Republican saying that. By now, 32 states and the District of Columbia have legalized pot or its ingredients to treat ailments. I didn't know there was that many now. I thought we were still in the 20s. Like 25 or so. Must have been a really good year for medical marijuana the last year or so in uh, various different elections and such. Uh, They have legalized pot or its ingredients to treat ailments, a movement that began in the 1990s. Even back then, some states have been approving broader decriminalization measures for two decades. The medical marijuana movement has picked up in considerable momentum in recent years. The DEA, however, continues to place marijuana in the most dangerous category of narcotics with no accepted medical use. That's Schedule 1, for those who had not heard that, Schedule 1 being the most dangerous. Congress for years had resisted calls to allow states to chart their own path on pot. The marijuana measure, which forbids the federal government from using any of its resources to impede state medical marijuana laws, was previously rejected uh, half a dozen times. When Washington, D.C. voters approved medical marijuana in 1998, Congress used its authority over the city's affairs to block that law from taking effect for 11 years years. Now, recently, listeners of this program may recall that in D.C., the city council uh, passed a decriminalization measure for marijuana. So not medical, but decrim for just possession of, I think, up to an ounce of pot has been made into a violation instead of a misdemeanor, that kind of thing. In D.C.? In D.C. So what happens in D.C., Johnny Ray, is when uh, the city council passes something, it has to then go to Congress for their approval. Okay. So unlike logical, your, yeah, unlike your typical city council, just pass whatever they want. City council has oversight by Congress, and Congress can either uh, basically bat it back and say, nope, we're not going to accept this, or they can sort of just let it pass. And so that's what happened with the decrim uh, provisions as passed by the city council was that Congress just basically sat by and did nothing. So those did pass and those have, I believe, gone into effect. So at this point, marijuana has been decriminalized in D.C. But what happened this year uh, during the election was that D.C. passed at the ballot box. They passed legalization of cannabis. Uh Uh-huh. Unfortunately, there is a movement afoot from what I understand. I don't know if it has succeeded at this point, but I believe they are going to try to stop it. If not, they have already stopped that from being implemented. So D.C., apparently Congress is okay with decrim, 
but not legalization. And now you've got the good news that they are going ahead and and they're going to not interfere with states that have medical pot, which is great news. That's that's this is huge, really. I, and that's that's thirty two states. Well, the, it doesn't break it down, Johnny Ray. It says thirty two states and D.C. have legalized or uh, have legalized pot or its ingredients to treat ailments. Uh -huh. So in some places, marijuana may not be fully legal for medical purposes, but there may be like extracts or something. I, I felt like I'd heard that was the case in Florida, uh, but that ultimately didn't pass this year. The Florida medical thing didn't uh -huh. actually make it. Uh, I've heard two different competing stories on that. One that it was for just straight up pot, another that it was for uh, like a... Some sort of an extract, like a, a tincture. Seems, seems like this is a step in the right direction. This is the, big news. The, this me. this omnibus spending bill is what Ron Paul was uh, bemoaning in his latest article. Yeah, I can't say I'm a huge fan of a omnibus spending bill or the fact that there's all kinds of different crap thrown into this thing. But yeah, there's one one light on the horizon, I guess. 855, 450 free. I've got that article from Ron Paul coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. I have a license. That means you're protected. That's nonsense. Just because somebody has a license doesn't mean anything about their business acumen. It doesn't mean anything about their ability to satisfy their customers. It essentially means that they paid the state money. And, and jumped that's through it. the hoops. Yep. And they filled out money. some paperwork. Exactly. And that's all that the license means. But yet it has this aura of legitimacy to it. Oh, it's a license. And they paid some money to the state, and so therefore they must be a good company. It's absurd. And absolutely, and what does is it depletes the pool of people out there that would be doing business in that particular way. You know, they just can't get up the money to get the license. They can't get up the money to get the fancy vans and yes. all that other stuff that's involved in being a contractor or whatever. I'm, I'm thinking of plumbers right now, sure. I guess. And different plumbing jobs require different levels of skill. When you're talking about just a regular thing, why can't you have a handyman guy come in and do it? Why does he have to be licensed? Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Pretty crazy. Free Talk Live, you dial toll free to take control of the airwaves here at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Feel free to hop on there and talk to us about whatever happens to be on your mind with you tonight. You've got Ian here. And Johnny Ray. Ian, have you ever, as a listener, have you ever called a radio talk show? Yes. Yes, you, I have on yeah. more than one occasion. Why do you ask? Just curious because you're giving out the phone number. It made me think about it. When I was a listener of Free Talk Live, I called in once before, mm-hmm. right shortly before I moved up here, and I talked about uh, g- uh, price gouging and and how how much I was for it because there had been a gasoline. It was after the refineries and mm-hmm. the. In the in the Gulf had been overcome by uh, some hurricane type activity, and the prices were going up, and people in the South were experiencing protections from the from their states against price gouging. Meaning, the were, states were demanding that companies not raise prices. Yeah, that seems silly to me, but not to most people. <laughs> well, because most people don't understand kind of the economics behind it, right? They don't understand the reason for it and why it's actually a good thing. It's emotionally appealing to. Put down to 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 put constraints on the merchants like that in a time of crisis. Sure, and it also appeals to the emotion that hey, you're not going to have to pay twice as much for gasoline. Who really wants to do that? Mm-hmm. Um, so that feels like you know it feels like the government's doing something for you, but really what they're doing is they're screwing up the laws of supply and demand. Because one of the reasons why prices rise in an emergency situation like that is. Uh, if they raise the price on whatever the item is, whether it's ice or gasoline or water or something like that, then that will mean that people will be more judicious with the amount they purchase. Whereas if uh, if it's cheap, as it normally is, to get water or ice or whatever, you may have somebody show up with a bunch of uh, buckets or coolers or something like that, buy all the ice out of the, the cooler, and then you got no ice to give to anyone else right. at that point. But if ice goes from a dollar a bag to five dollars a bag or ten dollars a bag or i don't know i don't know what the bag of ice will go for in a situation like that mm-hmm. but if a bag of ice goes up two three four times as much as it normally is the people who need to keep their insulin cold are going to be willing to pay that price and the people who want to keep their beer cold are not as willing to pay yeah, that price yeah exactly right and uh, and or people who you know would be coming to buy ice will not buy as much ice they will buy less a, a smaller amount of it which leaves more ice uh, there for more people to purchase. And also the fact that uh, the products are going up in price will incentivize more deliveries to come into that area, right? Because, oh, well, we're going to sell out of these batteries. You know, even though we've doubled the price on the batteries, we're going to sell out. So we need to get another we need to get another pallet full in. Mm-hmm. So there's an encouragement to continue bringing product in as well. So what, can you share who what, what radio uh, shows you called? Um, oh, b- before hosting a talk show, you mean, or like since hosting a talk Whichever show? Whichever was the most memorable experience. Um, I've used to call, I called WFLA in Tampa a couple times uh-huh. on one of their weekend shows. I think it was Mark Biro was that guy, his, his host, that host's name. He was a kind of a progressive talk show host. And I have called, I believe, maybe I called Lionel at one point in the past. I don't recall for sure on that one. Does he I, do pop music? No, what? Lionel's a talk show host. Okay. And Lionel, there is a Lionel singer who sings pop music. That's a different Lionel. And uh, but more recently, I called the local talk station here in in Keene, New Hampshire, WKBK. Oh, that's right, you do. Fairly, yeah, I'm an irregular caller there. There have been times where I've been reg- more regular, but yeah, yeah. So there you go. What was your experience like calling Free Talk Live, Johnny Ray? Was it pleasant? Yes, it was. Was it easy to get on? Yes, it was. Yeah, it generally is, especially on a weeknight. Uh, it, it's generally, you know, almost wide open here a lot of times. So the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We're not supposed to tell you that in talk radio. That's supposed to be one of the talk radio secrets is you're not supposed to reveal uh, if, you, if you've if you got open phone lines. But here it's pretty obvious because we're an open phone show. 
And if somebody's not calling in, then we're talking, right? Like if somebody's and by on, we and by by we and I, we mean you. Yeah, you and me, Johnny Ray. Um, so if somebody's online, we'll go to you and your calls and thoughts. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It is the season for uh, giving gifts to people that you care about or maybe to yourself. Either of those folks, you or the other people, will really enjoy Sherry's Berries, unless for some reason they don't like strawberries dipped in delicious chocolate, milk, dark chocolate, white chocolate, it's all there, plus decorative swizzle, chocolate chips and nuts. They're dipped in those things and they're delicious. They get some of the best quality berries you can find. I've never had a bad Sherry's Berry. Uh, They're always absolutely amazing. And you can get them for just $19.99. Now, that's the starting price. It's over 40, uh, 40% savings. But you can also double the berries from Sherry's Berries for just $10 more. Trust me on this. If you go with Sherry's Berries this holiday season, do the doubling deal. Don't miss out on the double berries. You're going to want to have more berries to share and more berries to enjoy, especially if you're ordering them for yourself or your family or whoever it is. They're going to enjoy it. Uh, You can go to berries.com and use our code FTL. That's B-E-R-R-I-E-S, berries.com, code FTL. Just click the microphone in the top right-hand corner of the site. That's where you type in FTL. That gives you access to the special deals. And they've also got other treats uh, like cake truffles, Christmas cake pops, and dipped pretzels. So for whatever reason, if strawberries don't float your boat, they've got all kinds of neat stuff over at Sherry's Berries. And again, uh, your code that you need is FTL to get the special deal. $19.99 gets you an order of Sherry's Berries, and you can double the berries for just $10 more. So, berries.com. Now, there's shipping involved, so you know the cost will go up a little bit uh, from what you know the base price is. And you can ship based on different times, so you can be very specific when, when you want these things delivered. And obviously, some days are more popular than others as far as uh, deliveries, so those days may cost more as a result uh, due to high demand. So, get your berries, get your order in sooner rather than later at berries.com with code FTL. I know somebody named Sherry, and, and she's very curvaceous, and I never forget her name because I just think Sherry's Berries. All right, Sherry. Berries.com. 855-450 free. The good news coming out of Washington, D.C. Not a whole lot of good news comes out of this place, but in this case, it's worth talking about. There's a uh, buried provision in a 1,600-page federal spending bill, which I'm sure... I'm sure 1,602 of the 1,603 pages are absolute junk and not good for freedom. But there's a little bit in there where they're going to actually restrict the federal government from enforcing drug law or the marijuana laws on states with medical marijuana, meaning that they won't anymore be able to raid medical marijuana shops. Uh, And presumably that also means they won't be able to raid the growers either. Obviously, I haven't read the text. We're going on what the L.A. Times is reporting here. Uh, Even as Congress has shifted ground on medical marijuana, lawmakers remain uneasy about full legalization. A separate amendment to the spending package tacked on at the behest of anti-marijuana crusader Representative Andy Harris will jeopardize the legalization of recreational pot in Washington, D.C., which voters approved last month. Ah, So that was what I was talking about before, where voters went ahead and and went with legalization in D.C., but if Congress steps in the way— That won't happen. So this very same spending bill that is going to make it so that the D.C. goons from the DEA won't be able to mess with medical marijuana states also means that the people in D.C. won't get the legalization they voted for. So it's uh, kind of a double-edged sword. Marijuana proponents nonetheless said they felt more confident than ever that Congress was drifting toward their point of view. Bill Piper, lobbyist for the Drug Policy Alliance, called the move historic. He says the war on medical marijuana is over. Now the fight moves on to legalization of all marijuana. This is the strongest signal, he says, that we've received from Congress that politics have really shifted. Congress has been slow to catch up with the states and the American people, but it is catching up. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. 
we have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure Ancient Defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't gonna make it. Wait, no. Now. Wait a minute. Holy oh, crap. Yeah, right. Whoa. Hey! Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24 7 to help you we also have other pain relieving braces too for your shoulder ankle or back you may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you so please call now 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 you're listening to the best liberty oriented audio streamed around the clock on the air and online this is the liberty radio network at lrn.fm Free Talk Live. You can join us toll free here at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. All of the features on the site are free, so enjoy those on us. And uh, once again, that's freetalklive.com. The front page created by listeners like you. The content there is a Reddit based system. You can submit news articles, blog posts, YouTube videos, whatever it is you think is interesting, useful, exciting, outrageous, entertaining, whatever. Submit it there. Other listeners can vote it up or down. You get to vote on things there as well. Go to freetalklive.com and see what other listeners uh, think is useful and interesting. And uh, we will maybe share some of that on the air. So go to freetalklive.com to get interactive. And if you care about the future of Bitcoin and the peer-to-peer -peer economy, you should head down to the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. It's happening at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, March 28th and 29th. That's coming up in just a few months. It'll be here before you know it. Speakers, exhibitions, 
and a great opportunity to do some networking as well as hosting the second million dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. The second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference will highlight what Bitcoin means to everyone as well as concentrate on where the technology can go beyond just being a currency. If you want a glimpse into the future, you want to be in Austin, Texas on March 28th and 29th. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com to get your tickets. And if you use code FTL, you'll get a $25 discount off the already very affordable $150 admission price, which is very affordable for these kind of conference events. And not only that, the Texas Bitcoin Conference will donate $25 to Sean's Outpost with every ticket purchase when you use the code. So you're getting an amazing price, and that is uh, going to a great event, and you're helping Sean's outco- uh, Outpost with their outreach and their assistance to the homeless. Free Talk Live, by the way, was there last year, and we will be there again this year. Looking forward to it uh, at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Get your tickets now to be a part of the future, March 28th and 29th at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, TexasBitcoinConference.com. We're talking about some of the good news, the very rare good news that actually comes out of Washington, D.C. In this case, the L.A. Times is reporting on a measure, uh, one of the portions of a very long 1,600-plus page spending bill that has passed Congress. It is going to be signed by Barack Obama, and as I pointed out, likely is full of a bunch of junk that is not going to help anybody's freedom. But at least one portion of it is, and that is they're going to begin leaving alone states that have medical marijuana. I mean, that, a, that a, uh, an organization within California or you know, New Hampshire or wherever it is that has medical marijuana will not have to worry about a DEA raid, which I think is a huge step forward. And as uh, Bill Piper, who's one of the lobbyists with the Drug Policy Alliance, says over the L.A. Times, he says he thinks Congress is finally catching up to the beliefs of the American people on this issue. Johnny Ray, what do you think? You think he's uh, you think he's right about that? Are we just are we right around the corner from legalization, or are we still another fifty years away from that? Hmm. Because it's happened in a handful of states now. I think we're probably right around the corner from going into the ABC store, liquor store model of marijuana, mm-hmm. where the nationally, you think nationally. In most states. You well, that's know. the thing. The states are coming on board slowly, right? We've got uh, a couple dozen medical marijuana states. There are now a handful of states that have actually legalized cannabis. So you've got Washington and Colorado did it first. And then I think it was this year that Oregon and Alaska also passed legalization, if I'm not mistaken. And I think, Guam, I believe. I think the, the various state governments no, will. Is Guam medical? I forget. Sorry. Go ahead. The various state governments will create their own marijuana cartels that mm-hmm. are allowed to operate inside their state, and there will be uh, dry counties where marijuana still isn't allowed. Yep, just like with alcohol. Right. That's what I see. But but do you see Congress pulling back from that? I mean, because if the state legalizes pot, we're still seeing the feds coming in and raiding places, the feds, the DEA coming in, ruining businesses, destroying people's lives. They're sort of like the Congress in, is sort of like a, they're they're up in a, a hot air balloon and they're having a party up there. And then the people down on the ground, we're pulling them along with ropes. But they're way they're 10 miles behind us. Mm-hmm. But we're marching on and pulling them along and they're just having a, a party in the air and they're disconnected <laughs> from reality. I'd say that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good picture that you've painted there, Johnny, right? Some might call it an analogy. Yes. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Would it also be a metaphor? Pro- uh, you're asking the wrong guy. So but I guess the the observation here is that it was nineteen ninety six when California did Proposition two fifteen. It was a ballot measure that legalized medical cannabis. And here we are in 2014, the very end of 2014. I don't know when this bill is going to go into effect. They've passed it. Barack Obama's to sign it. Presumably that'll be January 1st or maybe June or something like that. So I don't know when the actual start time will be for this. Like, you know, will the DEA continue to raid uh, businesses after this is passed up until a certain date? Or will it be as soon as this thing's signed by Barack Obama that it goes into effect? I don't know when it goes into effect. But we're almost 20 years away from when California passed Proposition 215. It's been nearly two decades. And just now, Congress is finally backing away on enforcing uh, the marijuana laws in medical marijuana states. So it makes me wonder, are we going to have to wait another 20 years? Because, you know, 
it was only what 2012 when the other states went ahead and voted for legalization when Colorado and Washington. So are we going to have to wait until 2030 uh, before we actually see Congress back down on legalization and stop the DEA, finally take marijuana from Schedule 1 and you know take it out of the schedules or at least move it down the list? Uh, how long are we going to have to wait for this? Or are we going to see a shorter period of time? Is it going to be 20 years to get to med- a medical legal- legalization in the federal level uh, versus – I'm sorry, it's not accurate to call legalization at the federal level – Leaving legalization alone, I guess, is all they're doing to to officially do nothing about medical marijuana. It took them 20 years. Is it going to be a shorter period of time? Will they will they be more likely to wrap this up in five more years? You know, are we going to see that kind of action from the federal government because of the balloon toting thing? Oh, which, by the way, I think a metaphor is definitely the, the word, a better word than analogy. A uh, metaphor is a figure of speech that identifies one thing as being the same as another unrelated thing, Hmm. thus strongly implying the similarities between the two. Well, it's not totally unrelated because you did say Congress was in the balloon. Uh, Right. Yeah. 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 But uh, but they're just party goers. They're anyway, let's uh, uh, I think (laughs) I think I I think the world moves faster these days, moves faster all the time. But government, again, is not the world. Yeah, it's its own thing. The measure which Rohrbrocker, this is the Republican from California, he's behind this thing, surprisingly, uh, championed with the representative Sam Farr, a Democrat from California, had the support of large numbers of Democrats for years. Enough Republicans finally joined them this year to put it over the top. When the House first passed the measure earlier this year, 49 Republicans voted yes. Some of the Republicans are pivoting off their traditional anti-drug platform at a time when most voters live in states where medical marijuana is legal and many cases, or in many cases, a result of ballot measures. Polls show that while Republican voters are far less likely than the broader public to support outright legalization, they do favor allowing marijuana for medical use by a commanding majority. This is of Republicans. Legalization also has a great appeal to millennials, a demographic group with which Republicans are aggressively trying to make inroads. And indeed, the millennials are uh, turning into voters here as time goes on. And of course, Gen Xers, as Johnny Ray, you and I are arguably, uh-huh. uh, are more likely, you know, as people get older, they're more likely to cast a vote. You, Johnny Ray, of course, are not uh, going to be casting a vote in, in any sort of matter. And I'm like the millennials in that way. And you but know aren't what? you glad to see this, Johnny Ray, as somebody who isn't, uh, uh, you know, you're not enamored with the system, you don't vote, you advocate, you advocate that people not participate in the system. Isn't this a good thing? I mean, by all impossible, qualifications. Impossible to tell. Impossible, impossible to, tell. to tell. It's just a weird twist on, on a bad situation. Well, wait a minute. How will you be able to tell? I mean, if they actually stop. Because the if they stop raiding stores, then isn't that a positive, you know, uh, development? Doesn't change the basic na- the, the basic relationship that the people have to the state, which is a. Uh, uh, that the, the, the state of Colorado, for example, is they won't let you be free with your marijuana. They're going to tell you exactly where you can buy it, where you can't buy it, what you can do with it, and you're still not free. Representative Barbara Lee of Oakland says the federal government should never get in between patients and their medicine. Agree that far, at least. 855 450 freeze the toll free number. This is Free Talk Live. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, get a free pound to try out the subscription, cancel anytime, coffee.freetalklive.com. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. 
It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. <coughs> but don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA for herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. HerbalHealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is available to you at 855-450-FREE. We're talking about cannabis and some of the good news coming out of D.C. where they are finally, finally, officially making it so the DEA will no longer be able to mess with medical marijuana providers in states that have legalized such a thing. And maybe what we'll see now is we'll see more states jumping on board the bandwagon because there have always been complaints from people inside the state, the politicians, the bureaucrats. I've seen these things uh, because I've gone to the hearings about medical marijuana here in New Hampshire over the years. And I've heard the complaints, well, we uh, don't really want to do this because uh, the federal government's still illegal. They could, uh, they could hurt us or something like that. And so now the feds are officially saying we're going to back off. There's a new bill that has a provision buried deep inside it that'll make it so the DEA can no longer raid companies providing medical marijuana in states where it's legal, which is, is great news. So is full-on legalization right around the corner? Uh, I wouldn't get my hopes up for that, but it's certainly more possible now than it has ever been in the past. In all of this, Johnny Ray, in this terrible, unwieldy, bureaucratic, monstrous federal government that certainly no one on this show has any appreciation for whatsoever, um, it's, it's you know, again, this bill, 1,600 plus pages, is probably a bunch of more government, big government spending all over the place. I don't know what they're authorizing, but it's nothing good. 
A lot of warfare and welfare. Yeah, that's a lot. I imagine that's what the rest of the bill is. For one small good provision about marijuana, it's probably offset by 20,000 terrible ones. Um, but all that said, you know, try to appreciate them when they do get it right every now and then. In this case, they did. Um, Johnny, you've got a kind of a political story, which is it's kind of a surprise. You you are paying attention mm-hmm. to the— I was listening to Glenn Beck today, and I learned about Jeb Bush. You're paying attention to the 2016 presidential race, which, honestly, I don't really care about. I mean, to me, it's just going to be a bunch of scumbags, one scumbag versus another scumbag. They all seem the same to me, but I happen to know that name. Jeb Bush, because I was raised in Florida, and he was the governor of Florida for a little while. He's also the brother of uh, George W. Bush, as yep. a matter of fact. So there's there's always been the conspiracy theory that uh, that we will eventually see another Bush Clinton go around at the uh, the federal level. Is it looking like that's taking shape, Johnny Ray? I heard I may be getting some of the words not quite right, but I believe I heard that Jeb Bush was forming an exploratory committee, or as I might say, an exploratory committee, or even an, an exploratory committee okay. to run for the office of president of the United States. Um, uh, Ho hum. Why is that important? Why why should our listeners care about that, Johnny Ray? Because it would mean if. Bush and Clinton were to run against each other, it would mean that the presidency has been occupied by one of three families for the past 30 plus years. Yeah. The Bushes and the Clintons and a little bit of uh, Barack Obama. Right. Uh, suggesting that the, U- that, that, that the U.S. is not quite as democratic as we might think because— you know, you just have to imagine that there's loads of eligible uh, young candidates for the office of president of the United States. Right. I mean, the, the the pitch is that anybody can be president, right? Yeah, that's what they told me in second grade. Yeah, and if anybody can be president, then why is it that Bushes and Clintons tend to be the presidents? And— Or maybe. We'll see. Uh, about a week ago, I was reading in theweek.com— by Bonnie Christian, an article entitled, this was before Jeb Bush's announcement, okay. but I think it was maybe expected. Uh, the headline is, Bush versus Clinton in 2016 is the perfect way to make millennials hate politics even more. This was not a banner year for youth voter participation. To be fair, off-year elections never are, but this year's mere 12% participation rate of voters under 30 is about more than midterm ennui. Rather, it's part of a larger trend of millennial disenchantment with the Washington establishment in both major parties, a trend that is primed to kick into high gear if we have a Bush versus Clinton contest in 2016. By the way, the author of the piece is a millennial, okay. which will sort of you'll hear it in the context later. Unfortunately, that contest is not so difficult to imagine. While Jeb Bush, brother of George W. and former governor of Florida, has yet to declare his candidacy, his son seems to expect the declaration to be forthcoming. Hillary Clinton, of course, has been unofficially campaigning since, well, to be charitable, let's say since she left the State Department last year. <laughs> As even of endorsers of this prospect seem to admit, this matchup offers nothing new. Recent comments from Bush, too, are instructive. Earlier this month, the former president said he'd like to see Bush versus Clinton in 2016, <laughs> admitting that running against Hillary herself, an all-too-well-known quantity, might be the one way Jeb could avoid being handicapped by his name. If the kids don't want broccoli, show them how good it looks compared to Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Is that really the quote? <laughs> no, that's not a quote. That's uh, oh, okay. That was the author's writing. All right. Which do you prefer, by the way? What? Brussels sprouts or broccoli? Ooh, broccoli. Brussels sprouts used to be just, they were completely in, inedible. But as I've grown up, especially like if you bake them, yeah. I find that, and, and, I, and I'm going to give the nod to Brussels sprouts over broccoli. It depends on the preparation, I guess. I mean, if br- Brussels sprouts are prepared in a certain way, mm-hmm. then they could be very good. Okay. I'm not saying I don't like Brussels sprouts. I, I, I do enjoy them. Sign of maturity. W <laughs> may feel favorably toward Bush versus Clinton, but his view is not widely shared. As my colleague God, here— God, I hope not. <laughs> me too. As my colleague here at The Week 
Damon Linker has noted, this possibility is, quote, almost enough to make me wonder why we don't just scrap the pretense of the United States being a democracy at all and instead embrace the truth, that at least when it comes to the nation's highest office, we're now a nepotistic oligarchy. Hmm. Even Barbara Bush, mom to George and Jeb, has voiced opinion, commenting, I think it's a great country. There are a lot of great families, and it's not just four families or whatever. There are other people out there that are very qualified, and we've had enough Bushes. No way. Did his mom actually say that? Yeah, she said we've had enough Bushes. Huh. How about that? Her math is a little fuzzy. But her point is well taken. (laughs) Bush versus Clinton would guarantee that the White House be occupied by just three families for 32 years straight. If increasingly politically independent young people are unenthusiastic about politics now, imagine their disinterest in choosing between two candidates Mm. who literally embody the status quo. Yeah, I mean, Barack Obama managed to fool a lot of millennials and Gen Xers into thinking that something new is on the horizon, that we're going to get change and hope out of this guy. And of course, you know, we didn't. Uh, We got more of the same, more of what George W. Bush actually was offering. Essentially, it was what Barack Obama brought to the table. And, uh, you know, you can't fool people too many times in Mm -hmm. this world. And millennials are fairly with it. I mean, I, I think as far as paying attention to things goes. I mean, there's certainly an argument that young people don't pay attention to politics, and I think that's there's a strong argument for that. But of those who do, young people are more connected than anyone ever before them. I mean, they are constantly on their phones and various different devices. They're born into a different world than they were born into. They call us, what do they, they call us like digital immigrants or something? Who? Who calls us that? I don't know. It was a a news story that I didn't read, but it was just a headline or something Hmm. that said that people over 30 or something are are, are internet immigrants Hmm. or or, or digital immigrants or something. Well, I I think that this is an interesting piece and, uh, well, I guess we'll see how it pans out because most of the uh, young people won't be voting in a private primary, I don't imagine. So it'll likely be the preferences of the older generations that end up selecting whoever it is that goes on to the general election. So it could very well end up being Bush and Clinton. Obviously, it's too early to speculate, and it's always too early to speculate because what the hell do the pollsters know anyway? Because we are nothing if not independent. We, the millennials, we, this author. Okay. Okay. Fully half of millennials reject all party labels, which is the most intense generational political disaffiliation in the 25 years Pew Research has measured it. Hmm. I've got a, That's a, good to know. a friend of mine that, that, uh, that I grew up with. He's a, an economics professor at a university, and he says that the, his students do not they – don't, they don't care a bit about politics. Politics doesn't interest them. They don't see any future in it. But that's not new, Johnny Ray. I mean, teenagers and early 20s folks well, no, I mean, for he, decades haven't cared about politics. Well, you would you would suspect, I think, that university goers would consider themselves more aware, more civic it. minded and that they should do this. Mm. And I would I would I would suspect that they are more engaged in the political process. And this friend of mine, he has made a lifetime and a career out of being in a university. So he knows. And he says that the change is large. The change toward apathy? Yes. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We can dig in further here. Get your thoughts as well on millennials and their political beliefs or lack thereof and what's going to happen in the future. Share your predictions. It's Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, December 16th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.35 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,212 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $337. Antiwar.com reports Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with Secretary of State John Kerry, pressing for a U.S. veto on the assorted U.N. resolutions coming up on the subject of peace talks. Two competing resolutions are looming, one being pushed by Jordan on behalf of the Palestinians, giving Israel two years to withdraw from the occupied West Bank. France is pushing an alternative text, which simply pushes for a two-year timetable for the resumption of the peace process. France sees a U.S. veto of the Jordan version as inevitable and says they hope their version is one that people can get behind. Netanyahu is lobbying against both, but pushing harder against the French version, claiming any conditions on Israel would threaten stability. Though U.S. officials have insisted they have made no decisions on vetoes yet, they traditionally veto anything Israel objects to, and Israeli Strategic Affairs Minister Yuval Steinitz expressed confidence in comments over the weekend and that the U.S. would continue that trend. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports heavily armed Australian police stormed a Sydney cafe early on Tuesday morning and freed terrified hostages being held there at gunpoint in a dramatic end to a 16-hour siege in which two captives and the attacker were killed. Police would investigate whether the two hostages were killed by the gunman or died in the crossfire. That according to the police commissioner for the state of New South Wales. Authorities have not publicly identified the gunman, but a police source named him as Man Haran Monis, an Iranian refugee and self-styled sheik known for sending hate mail to the families of Australian troops killed in Afghanistan. He was charged last year with being an accessory to the murder of his ex-wife, but had been free on bail. Several videos apparently showing hostages inside the Lent Cafe in Sydney's Central Business District making demands on behalf of Moniz were posted on social media during the siege. The gunman, whom the frightened hostages referred to as brother, demanded to talk to Prime Minister Tony Abbott, the delivery of an Islamic State flag, and that media broadcasts that Australia was under attack by the Islamic State. 
Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. The LA Times reports the U.S. Senate on Monday confirmed Dr. Vivek Murthy to become the 19th Surgeon General of the United States. The 51-43 to 43 vote makes Murthy, a 37-year-old graduate of Harvard University and Yale University Medical School, the third youngest physician to lead the U.S. Public Health Service's 6,800 commissioned officers. Murthy founded Doctors for America, a nationwide physicians group that worked to pass the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act and and has worked to promote HIV AIDS education in both the United States and India. At Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, his research had focused on improving the quality of clinical trials and expanding the participation of women and minorities in biomedical research. He has declared obesity the defining public health challenge of our time and, more controversially, supported an assault weapons ban and asserted that guns are a healthcare issue. In Senate confirmation hearings last February, Murthy said that, if confirmed, he would focus on childhood obesity, vaccinating children, and driving down tobacco use in the United States. In the end, the Senate vote on Murthy proceeded because new Senate rules require only a simple majority of lawmakers to shut down a filibuster over presidential nominations. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Big tech news this week as Microsoft has unveiled its new generation Xbox One. Designers say the console's revolutionary new voice command feature makes it easier than ever for the Xbox to control its users. According to Microsoft spokesman Don Matrick, quote, the Xbox One is programmed with a host of simple voice commands that you will respond to instantly. In addition to phrases like jump, shoot, and insert game disc, users will also understand more complicated instructions like download Call of Duty update or come into the room and turn on Xbox. The Xbox One tells us what games to play, what music to listen to, what shows to watch. Watch TV. And with that simple command, I'm watching live TV. The new Xbox's high-tech sensors can also detect your expression and tell when you're looking away from the television. Andy, look back at the TV. Microsoft says the new Xbox can also command you using your smartphone or tablet. TechBuzz is raving, quote, it's the immersive obedience experience we've been waiting for. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in to bring up anything you want here at 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. It's 855-450-3733. And we have Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Johnny Ray is here with me. I'm Ian. Johnny, you've been talking uh, just a moment ago for our listeners just tuning in about a story, and I forget where it's coming from. Where Theweek.com. Theweek.com. Uh, about the prospect that the 2016 presidential race could end up being another Bush versus Clinton. In this case, different Clinton and different Bush, but Bushes and Clintons to which we are all familiar with. I mean, mm-hmm. most people are familiar with these uh, these people and co- sort of commenting on how that if that comes to pass, it's, you know, there's a chance it might not, right? There's, you don't know who's going to win the primary. And I think anybody that tries to predict that sort of thing is silly because you don't really know till it happens. But let's see with the Republicans, there's Rick Perry, uh, Romney, and Jeb Bush, and with the Democrats, Clinton is the only one I know of. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't tell you I've been following it at all because I really haven't. Uh, I guess the Rand Paul is considering it, but I don't even know if he's official Oh, and yet. him too, yeah. I don't know if he's official. I don't know like at what point they can become official. Like As you said, Jeb Bush is exploring the idea. Uh-huh. So I think there's like a, that's, the, that's the level before actually throwing your hat into the ring. Mm -hmm. Whatever that means. So they're kind of commenting on the ridiculous factor of how if it actually becomes Jeb Bush versus Hillary Clinton, that it will have then been, you know, presuming whichever one wins, it'll have then been 30 plus years of the same three families occupying the White House. Amazing. And how millennials, young people, people, what, uh, up to about age 30 today, maybe, or 34 or so, because I'm 34 and I'm kind of on the tail end of Gen X. So people up to about age 30, 31, 32. Born in 82 between between 82 and 2003. 
So uh, that those folks are, you know, they're well aware that this is a sham, uh, the political system, and that uh, that if it becomes Bush versus Clinton in 2016, it'll drive even more of them out of the system. That's kind of the position that's being taken here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not that we're apathetic. This is the author of the piece. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's not that we're apathetic. While much is being made of the need for candidates to market to millennials, and certainly both iterations of the Obama campaign benefited from this sort of digital savvy. Sure, they did. We're not skipping the voting booth because we want more shiny YouTube clips. On the contrary, we want to change the world. And I love this next part. We just don't see government as a viable partner in that project. Hmm. I hope that's true, man. Mm -hmm. As a survey from Harvard revealed last year, strong majorities of millennials believe that most politicians govern for, quote, selfish reasons and that elected officials don't share our priorities. And just 16 percent could disagree with the statement that politics today are no longer able to meet the challenges our country is facing. I think politics is silly because— 60 percent disagreed with that statement or agreed? Only 16 percent— 16? Only 16 could disagree with the statement. Okay, okay. That. I thought you had said 60, so 16. Yes. Uh, uh, so a large group, a large majority, super majority of them are not a fan of the political system. Uh, 80, uh, yeah, the you could say uh, that approximately 84% believe politics today are no longer able to meet the challenges that our country is facing. Politics, Interesting. Yeah, the, I mean, the ideal in politics is that the will of the majority is expressed, mm-hmm. and I don't consider that to be um, to be more that, that we should suppose the will of the majority is ever correct about anything. Absolutely. There have been so many examples where the majority has been dead wrong. And slavery. And, you know, the, the system, our system by design doesn't doesn't even doesn't count a majority of the people's opinion. That's true. O- only a minority of people ever go out to vote. So even if the majority, of, even if the, the, the will of the majority was something that you wanted, American democracy does not give that to you. Hmm. Well, I'm glad to hear that uh, the, many of the young people in America are savvy enough to be figuring this stuff out. But I would like to hear what their answer is. I mean, if they don't think politics is going to be able to handle the problems of the country, you know, what are they suggesting? Because spoken like a true central planner, are Ian. they uh, pff, are they all uh, you know libertarians? I doubt it. Right. So what are the ideas that will replace the system? What is the proposal? What what would millennials as a group, what would the variety of uh, of proposals be from those people? I'm I'm interested in hearing it. If you if you're a millennial and you'd like to share your thoughts here, 855 450 free. Let's go to Elma. She's on the line in Tallahassee. Elma, is it how do you spell your name? Is it E L M A? No, that's Yankee. It's A-L-M-A. Okay, that's what I thought, and I didn't understand, because I know you had called before, and we were calling you Alma, but our board ops have been spelling it with an E. like Al, A-L, Al, and then a Ma, like Mama, Alma. That's what I thought that it was. Our board ops just been getting it wrong, I guess. I don't care. Everybody calls me Elma or anything. All right, Alma. But when you call me those names, I know where you're from. (laughs) So it doesn't matter to me. Well, I'm from the South, just so you know. Anyway, go uh, ahead. Are you, where, were you, where were you raised? I was raised in Florida. Well, Although, not Florida real Florida. Kind of south. My husband was raised there, but it's kind of south. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not really the south because I was raised in Sarasota, which is on the west that coast. Is, so that is I thought, but isn't it, Sarasota sort of like up in the panhandle? No, no, that's where Elma, no, or Elma no, no, is. No, 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 it's way down there. It's way down there. She's up in the panhandle in Tallahassee. I just kept my mouth shut. I, well, yeah. I'm really from Georgia, but I ain't I, here. It ain't southern stuff i'm not but uh, about three miles from the state line so i always go tallahassee because that's the station gotcha so i just go there so what did you want to share with our audience tonight do you say do you say appalachian or appalachian or something else (laughs) appalachian appalachian okay okay yeah, it, what are you talking about? The mountains? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I'm from, oh, yeah. Appalachicola is in Florida. You know, down by Panama City. That's where my mama was born. The, my dad, my granddaddy was a sponge diver. He was from like Greece. The yeah. the, the okay. mountains were named for the Appalachian Indians. Oh, isn't it beautiful there? Uh, yes, we it is. Used, 
I lived up there six months. We used to go up there all the time. So, Alma, what did you want to share with our audience tonight? Go ahead. Okay, Ian, you know, I listen, I I don't listen to too many talk shows anymore because they become the elite talk shows. And I just heard bits and pieces today because I couldn't handle it. But it was about Oprah and Paula Dean. Oh, I guess one's black, one's white. Why didn't Oprah take up for Paula Dean? Well, both of them had. Wasn't Paula Dean just to get in? Well, hold on a sec before you go on. Wasn't Paula Dean like a cooking lady who said said the N word or something? Y'all, well, people in the South don't go every four year words. Y'all, y'all, we don't do that. That is a misunderstood thing. Wait, we what? We do not do, do what? that. We don't go. Every four year words go, y'all hear me, y'all love it, y'all this. We don't talk like that. What does that have to do with Paula Dean? I'm sorry, I'm confused. Well, that's Paula Dean. That's how she talks. Oh, you're saying she's overdoing it. You're, you're... Definitely. I don't know where she's really from. I see. I okay. don't know, but. It's but didn't like, she get in some hot water for using the N-word or something like that in the past? What was her deal? It, yeah, but she got much richer from it, didn't she? Did she? I don't know, honestly. I know nothing yes, about this she lady. Did. She got much richer. She went way out there. And So what's and, the question um, about Oprah? What is it? How does okay. Oprah tie into this? I'm confused. Help me yeah, out. Yeah, Oprah is, said something about Obama and something, I guess, with the N or something. And I I wouldn't pay attention to it because it's all a bunch of mess. But then all you hear on the radio is, why didn't Oprah help Paula Dean when she got in trouble? You know, and it's like, it's all a bunch of bull that goes on. Everything you hear is bull, you know, and it's all the same. So this is what talk show hosts were talking about today? Is that what you're saying? They're all the same. All the big elite ones, they all have the same platform. Everyone say the same thing. You're talking about like Rush thing. Limbaugh or people like that, those kind of people? I don't even go there. I yeah. listen to this one and that one, and I, I here lately I can't stand it more than 15 minutes. I don't blame you, go, Alma, and I'm glad thing. that you're listening to Free Talk Live. I share your oh, concerns. I love y'all, sweetheart. Thank you for the call tonight. We love you, too. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Yeah, talk radio, it's, uh, it's pretty... Uh, it's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pretty homogenous, meaning that uh, very similar across all of the various different shows. Free Talk Live is one of the unusual ones. We kind of stand out from the pack in that way because, well, we're not conserva clones here, and nor are we progressive. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. 
On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online at freetalklive.com. Get interactive there on the site. Lots of of stuff to do at freetalklive.com, and it's all free. So enjoy. Something else you can enjoy this holiday season is In Freedom's Cause. It's audio theater. It's over two hours long, and it is one of the greatest stories of the struggle for freedom in recorded history. The story of William Wallace, you know, like from Braveheart, but only historically accurate and still entertaining. Uh, there's a big name actors like Joanne Froggett from Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd, Lord of the Ring from Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keynes from Chronicles of Narnia, and James Cosmo from Braveheart. Those are just some of the voices uh, that you'll hear. So it's a great quality acting. Plus, the sound effects are awesome. It's audio theater, so you don't actually watch anything. You can listen to it as you're out for a jog or, you know, in the car with the family. Uh, and it's a great, I think it would be very good for uh, for some young people in your family as a gift. In fact, you can get their family four-pack, which is four copies of this audio theater. Uh, the In Freedom's Cause is what it's called. InFreedomsCause.com is their website. You get the family four-pack with coupon code FTL, you get it at half price at infreedomscause.com. This is a movie that is played on the screen of your mind. So go and check it out, infreedomscause.com. There's a study guide available. The kids in your life will love this thing. And uh, I've listened to it, and I was impressed with the, the quality of this. Great acting, great sound effects, and the sound and the score is original. Uh, the music is original in this. Infreedomscause.com, coupon code FTL. So, Johnny Ray, we just had uh, Alma on the line from Tallahassee calling and, and sort of grousing about the, the state of talk radio and how uh, it all sounds the same. They're all talking about the same story and likely taking the same kind of Republican talking points position uh, on things. I uh, don't really encounter the conservative talk radio very often. I guess, you know, every now and then I'll hear the local station and and hear what's going on there. Do you ever encounter any of this stuff, Johnny Ray? Or oh, yeah. Yeah, I've started. For, for several years, I was listening to NPR only. Uh, uh, sometimes I would listen to a little music. But mm -hmm. it was it's strange that I should have done that because I grew up listening to conservative talk. And um, it just became just too... Um, it was just... You could tell that 
that especially Limbaugh didn't even he doesn't even believe it anymore. He's just You think he, that's true? Yes, I think it's true. Glenn Beck, I think, is creating his own religion. Maybe he wants to set himself up as the next king of the U.S. <laughs> after we kill all the Muslims. And then John Batchelor, I don't know much about him. Is Hannity Glenn Beck and a Muslim, Levin. Is, is Glenn Beck like a Muslim hater? Yes. Really? Yes. That's he, too bad. He was talking about the— I thought there was hope for Glenn Beck. The Sydney siege, and um, the, there, were, there was a— there were there was a hostage situation yeah, in Sydney, I heard Aust- about that. Australia, and it was uh, it was a Muslim imam who was who was holding the people hostage, mm-hmm. and Glenn was saying, uh, the people of Australia they they refuse to believe that Muslims are evil, and I'm putting words in his mouth, so I should okay. stop. But a couple of days ago, he was talking about it, and it, he sounded um, like he was disappointed in the in the media's presentation of this as not being a Muslim problem. Hmm. Well, that's too bad. Uh, I yeah, really so, had hope for Glenn Beck. I really did. I yeah, and I remember he seems like he's kind of come along on some things over the years, like being more freedom friendly, he's talking just, to libertarians, like you know Penn Jillette, for uh-huh. instance. Um, he's just uh, too old, I think. He's just part of... Uh, he, he, too set in his ways. Huh? He will never... Can't teach, an old, can't teach an old dog new tricks? I don't see Glenn Beck doing it. Um, hmm. I mean, the military is what I'm thinking of. And yeah. the, the military is so sacred to him. Sure, um, as it is with all the conservative clone hosts. Uh, who, it, yeah, especially the ones who are never served in the military. Yeah. Um, and he won't let go of that. The, the simple fact is the military, um, they confiscate... You know, as as every organization in the U.S. does, they don't earn their money honestly. They 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 get it on the back off the backs of the American people. As so, every organization in the U.S. government, you mean? Yes, every yeah, okay. organization in the U.S. government. So, um, thank you for that yeah. distinction. So, no matter what they do with that money after it's been taxed, it's not good. It's not wholesome. Um, and and uh, so I think Glenn Beck is always going to be going to be beholden to to an American ideal and an American exceptionalism that has never existed. You know, interestingly, I was just reading today uh, sort of on this topic of dull, conservative clone talk radio. By the way, progressive talk's no different. Uh, it's the same kind of uh, talking points. They echo the same things. I don't listen to, I, I don't, again, I don't listen to much of that, but it's my understanding that it's uh, formatted in very the same, very much the same manner. Uh, but I did read something about news talk being down in the ratings, uh, like overall across the United States, that mm-hmm. that news talk is not doing as well as it once had done in recent history, and that uh, you know the numbers are off. I mean, it's not down significantly, but it's down by a few percentage points as far as its listenership and and its relevance com- when compared to other radio formats like music radio, country music, and things like that. Uh, so we're seeing, you know, a decline, it seems, in the popularity of news talk radio. And I think that part of that is because the business as a whole is afraid to do new things. You know, most of the shows out there are conserva clone talk shows. They're they're everybody trying to do what Rush is doing, but somehow bring a, a new twist from the conservatives' perspective. Like, I'm the young Rush Limbaugh. I'm the female Rush Limbaugh. You know, so like they're trying to do slight variations on the whole Rush, I'm Rush Limbaugh thing, but ultimately they're all still kind of aping his act. Yeah, and, and when people are getting tired of it, and I when, think. Yeah, and when Rush, Rush, uh, pioneered that, that talk radio revolution, there were bright. Uh, exciting people getting into this new frontier of information and politics was still relevant. Mm -hmm. And now that people don't care about politics and people, uh, now that people don't care about politics, the best and the brightest are going elsewhere and talk radio is getting more and more boring and derivative. That's that's an interesting point that, uh, that talk radio as it is, wouldn't attract People who are bright or people who are They're talking know, about stuff that only old people care about anymore. Right. Yeah, that's true. And it's, so it becomes a kind of a tough thing because like, if you're programming an AM radio station, your audience is likely mostly over the age of 50 simply because it's AM radio. I mean, mm-hmm. trying to get a millennial to listen to AM radio, I think, is a very difficult, <laughs> a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. I know that I've had to— uh, yeah, yeah. Two of my girlfriends in the last decade have been, you know, basically under 25. 
uh, so solidly millennials, and they they can't stand AM radio. They cannot listen to it. If it's not a completely crystal clean signal, if there's any amount of static, it becomes it becomes painful for them to listen to. My oldest brother was like that. He couldn't he couldn't take it, and it was tough because. It's funny going back to Phil Hendry again. There was a station in Charlotte back in the early 2000s, I guess, mm-hmm. that was that that had Phil Hendry on at night. And I lived in Asheville, which was I, I don't know three hours away. And at night, I could pick up that show, but it was staticky, and I was trying to get my brothers to listen to it, and, and they wouldn't do and it. They wouldn't do it. Are they younger brothers? No, older. I'm the oh, youngest. Really? I'm the youngest son of the youngest son of the youngest son. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. So you, the younger of the brothers, was more tolerant to yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Toll free number is 855 450 free. Uh, you can take control of the airwaves here. Talk radio, business, politics, whatever's on your mind, you can discuss it here on Free Talk Live. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Get updates on your favorite GCN shows and hosts. Go to GCNlive.com and click on the banner in the upper left corner. Just for signing up, you're automatically entered for monthly giveaways. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. Hi, I'm Sam Nussbaum, WellPoint's Chief Medical Officer. We proudly support the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Join us in working together to provide children with a healthier start in life. Visit marchofdimes.org. Inclement weather prevents a liar from getting to work, and a lunchbox is mostly medication. Sources across the nation impatiently reported today that the 24-hour news cycle seemed to be taking forever, telling reporters that the continuous coverage from MSNBC, CNN, and other news sources was simply not continuous enough. Frustrated Americans demanded more panel coverage, around-the-clock bulletins, and breaking reactions from Twitter. It's like, sure, I have five channels of unending news updates constantly flooding my screen, but each one of those only has one slow-moving news ticker. Why not three or four running at triple speed? Honestly, these networks need to understand that I can't just wait around all day for minute by minute coverage. And in this week's science news, a new report finds that lake ice grows safer to venture out on with each beer consumed. In other news, the beauty industry announces a new initiative to make women self-conscious about their palms. A beautiful cinnamon bun is too good for this world, too pure. And a picky eater is 38. This is the Onion News Network. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. 
See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. We're talking about talk radio, the business end of things, how things are a little tough these days for the talk radio industry. And there are several reasons why. And Johnny Ray, you're about to touch on yet another one that I think really bears mentioning here in a moment. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can also join us at freetalklive.com. Tis the season to be doing some shopping, but why bother with the crowds? Why bother with the traffic, the parking, the angry people in the lines, the employees that you know aren't having a good time? You don't have to deal with any of that. You can just go and get some Sherry's Berries. Freshly dipped strawberries dipped in delicious white milk and dark chocolatey goodness covered with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, and nuts. Uh, so it's just amazing. We've had these things in the studio. They're delicious. I highly recommend them. It's a great gift. Anything that you can uh, just that you can share with somebody that they're going to enjoy and that they're going to remember enjoying. Sherry's Berries, you'll always remember having these things. They're so good. They're decadent. They're, and they're quality strawberries, by the way. These are great uh, I've never had a bad Sherry's Berry. They always seem to pick the best of the, the batch uh, to put through their process of dipping uh, deliciousness. You can go and get yours starting at just $19.99. That's over 40% savings. Or double the berries for just $10 more. Now, you'll need our discount code to get this special offer. And you're going to want to do the double the berries thing. Trust me on this. We've had the double berries order here, and we thought, wow, I'm glad we got the double berries rather than half of whatever that amount would be. So go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S, berries.com. Click the microphone in the top right-hand corner. Type in FTL. Christmas is coming up. It's next week. I mean, we're literally less than 10 days away from Christmas. It's not too late to get this taken care of. This is the only way you can get this amazing 1999 Sherry's Berries offer. Go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Click the mic in the top right-hand corner. Type in FTL. It's a perfect gift without any of the shopping hassle at Sherry's Berries. All right, going back to your phone calls and thoughts, uh, we'll start with John. He's in Charleston, West Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, John. Hey, uh, you guys were uh, kind of this and going back a little bit for being a little too pro-military. Yeah, and I really, was. He's, he's one of the few uh, guys on conservative radio right now that's kind of a softy. I mean, what do you mean by that? He's, he's just soft, man. I mean, his whole thing is love, all about loving everybody else. I mean, it is. Yeah, that the intro music is. is is it, it, there's an intro to his show, and there's this British woman talking about love and the fusion of entertainment and, and education, and yeah, I've heard I've heard some and, of and that. enlightenment, entertainment and enlightenment. But but Johnny Ray, you were saying that he doesn't like Muslims. That doesn't sound very loving. Uh, yes, I, I I did say that, and I should pr and I should really uh, back up my claim a little bit more, and I'm not about to do that in these next immediate moments. Um, besides what I said before uh, about what he was, the comments he made about the Sydney siege, but it's this love business that that made me start thinking that he wanted to be the next God King of the U.S. Hmm. So what do you uh, think, John? Are you you a fan actually, or what? I think I think he's trying to do something that's really hard right now. Um, it's kind of to get people to understand where conservative people are coming from. And uh, I think a lot of people are kind of afraid to hurt somebody's feelings these days. And I where mean, are you it, coming it, from? It what is it? What does it mean? Sense. Where you're coming from? Oh, I mean, everybody's afraid that uh, somebody's going to be offended by something. I mean, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. Uh, this uh, Coonskin Park here in West Virginia. They're thinking about changing the name because it might be offensive to somebody. It's Coonskin Park. Is that what you said? Uh huh. 
Okay. As in like a raccoon. I got you. Well, yep. you know, I can certainly ha I, I certainly understand where you're coming from and that it's I can I can appreciate the idea that uh, people are a little bit too sensitive uh, with, you know, it seems like everybody's looking to be offended by something. And I certainly think that people need to, to toughen up their skin. Uh, we were talking about people wearing shirts that are offensive uh, in public places just last night on the show. And there are some people who... Oh, for the record, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to sure. interrupt, but before you cut me off, uh, I hate Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why do you hate him? It's just... Uh, for all the reasons that he said, he's an establishment Republican. Mm -hmm. He's not really a Tea Partier. Um, you think he believes he, what comes out of his mouth? Johnny Ray says he doesn't think I, that. Sometimes I wonder. I, I don't. I don't think he cares what comes out of his mouth. That's the problem. Hmm. But John, you called. You you called in to defend Glenn Beck. I wouldn't mind hearing a little little more of that. I want to like Glenn. Um, and oh, and and I, I don't mean, listen to him enough to criticize him as I have. But you said he was a right. softy, well, but that was by way of of defending him, or were you making a, a different of. point? It's kind of my, it's kind of his one flaw for me. Okay. But, I mean, other people, yeah. But uh, oh shoot, I was gonna. So, John, do you oh, find that talk radio one. is better uh, in twenty fourteen than it was, let's say, a decade ago? I think with a lot of the new people on 94.5, the station I listen to, get most of my news. Uh, yeah, I do. I, I think that hmm. there's uh, something big happening with Republicans and the Tea Party and all this stuff. A lot of stuff needs to change. What do you think that is happening? What, what's happening that's big or, or different? Uh we just elected a bunch of uh, Republicans for uh, Congress and the Senate. And, I mean, really, it's just Obama's policies. I'm not really prepared to talk about all that <laughs> stuff. It's just... Well, it's funny. You know, you, you can't make right. statements talking about how things are changing and, and different or better and not be able to back it up. I mean, I'd love to have you call in another night when you are prepared to talk about it because to me it just seems like right. business as usual. I mean, it seems to me like have you the— you heard of Agenda 21? Sure, sure. That's a U.N. thing. Okay, that, that really—I think that stems from uh, Scientology— and establishment politics. I don't know if it's from Scientology, and, but uh, the Agenda 21 thing, as I understand it, is like a UN program for uh, what to shove down the throats of people for a variety of different sort of control things. Um, basically, it kind of creates so many walls. I mean, we're just going to be slaves to the system. It's well, it's that's what it already is, it. man. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed that, but it's the Republicans and the Democrats who have brought us to the point of everyone is a slave to the system, with or without the UN. Uh, they've they've right. done just well, fine on their own. We we can vote and we can do stuff now, but I mean, if we don't do something with the system that we have, if we don't use the voting and the stuff that we have now, the tools that we have, it's going to be taken away. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Johnny Ray, you would disagree. You would say, don't vote. Don't participate in the system. Yeah, mostly for the reasons I brought up before. Voting is ideally to express the will of the majority, and there's no reason to believe that the will of the majority is the correct course in any situation. Nor that it has ever been actually expressed during any kind of a vote right. either, because voting for a political candidate doesn't actually speak to an issue. People vote for a political candidate for a variety of different reasons. Many of them vote because he's not the other guy. That's usually and frequently the reason why people will vote for one candidate over another, not because of their position on an issue or what, because they even know what their positions on the issues and, are. And, and, and voting is a lot easier than spending your money for a group that you know is doing good work. Mm -hmm. Voting is easier than actually confronting somebody who's doing evil in the world. Oh, yeah. Voting is easier than just about anything that's actually going to change the world. Like, you know, not paying taxes to the government? Right. Taking that's that, pretty hard to yeah, do. Yeah, that's a heck of an act. I would recommend uh, – look, I got. I have no problem with voting. I think that uh, here in, in, in New Hampshire we can actually see 
that it has worked to get people elected who care about freedom, like actual voluntarists and libertarian types. And I think they've done some good work here. But at the federal level, I do agree that it's pretty much a total waste. More coming up here in moments. 855 450 free. That's the toll free number. You take control here on Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Maybe enough time for you if you dial now at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. 
Uh, so with you tonight in studio, it's Ian. And Johnny Ray. And don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. If you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, we would like you to become a Free Talk Live amplifier. The AMP program allows you to help us get Free Talk Live on more radio stations around the country. Odds are... I would say that I would credit the AMP program with the super majority of our stations simply because if we didn't have the AMP dollars, we wouldn't be able to as effectively market this show and get on more radio stations from coast to coast as we currently are on over 150 stations. We're actually closing in on 160 uh, radio station affiliates. We also have a satellite channel in both uh, North and Central America as well as most of Africa, and that's all possible because of the Free Talk Live AMP program. The AMP program really helps us out, and for you, it's the price of a fancy cup of coffee. So go to amp.freetalklive.com. Get the perks. You get access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only forum, the AMP-only Facebook group as well. So some cool benefits, and your five bucks helps us out quite a bit at amp.freetalklive.com. That's A-M-P as in advertise, market, promote, amp.freetalklive.com. Back to your calls and thoughts. We have Yoshi calling from Mars. You're on Free Talk Live. Yoshi. Yeah, how you doing? Hey, you're on the air. Go ahead. I, um, I, I guess I just really want to talk about, um, I guess Mars could also be um, uh, synonymous with Indiana. <laughs> I want to talk about a certain situation that's going on here. I have time. Um, okay. There's a town called South Bend, and uh, a police officer of the Mishawaka um, Patrol, uh, he runs a store there that sells uniforms. Um, I don't know if you've heard about this. It's, I don't know, gone viral, quote-unquote. No, I have anyway, not heard about uh, it. Okay, probably not. One of his, one of his shirts um, it states the... Uh, if you want to breathe, don't break the law or some shit like that. Oh, we can't uh, have you saying those things on the radio, but uh, thank you for the call tonight. I uh, do appreciate hearing from you. you got to remember you are calling a talk radio program, and while we certainly support free speech here on Free Talk Live, unfortunately there are some words that are going to uh, not be okay with our radio affiliates because they've got FCC licenses. South Bend Business prints Breathe Easy shirts after... Notre Dame women wear I can't breathe shirts. The Notre Dame women's basketball team made news over the weekend when the players wore I can't breathe t-shirts. Those were the words that Eric Garner told police in New York before he died as officers were trying to subdue him. Basketball is just a game and the thing that it teaches you is about life and these are the lessons I want to learn. I'm sorry, Ian. I'll, you, we've got some callers, don't we? We do, but uh, this is what he was a calling about. A company called South Bend Uniform is now advertising a shirt with a different slogan, Breathe Easy period. Don't break the law. South oh, Bend geez. Uniform's owner is Corporal Jason Bartell. Oh, what a an shock. Officer from the Mishawaka Police Department. Yeah, we're seeing that uh, as well. There was a video that you were watching, Johnny Ray, with an interview with some cop during uh, one of the breaks on an MSNBC Cleveland show. Cleveland Police Union. Hit. Yeah, and at the very end of that, he has the same advice for people, that they just go ahead and do what they're told and everything will be fine. Let's continue here with your calls and thoughts. Matthew's in Tallahassee listening to WVFT. Hello, Matthew. Oh, hey. Hey, you're on the oh, air. I heard a caller earlier. Um, he was talking about the Scientologist. Well, I have the, some friends that are Scientologists, the only friends we really got. And uh, they always sound like when we talk to them, like they're libertarians themselves. We talk about against the government, all kinds of stuff. Is that right? That's right. I'll take your word for it. I mean, I'd, I've never actually met uh, – I met a, actually a former Scientologist, but I've I've never met a Scientologist who's into it right now. I, I guess well, – you know, know, Go ahead. Well, you know, you hear bad things about them all the time, but I've always heard about it too till we met them, and they're the best friends we've got. No, well, I'm not saying you can't like be good friends people. with a Scientologist. I can be good friends with all kinds of people in lots of different religions, but there are oh, legitimate yeah. critiques of the Scientology religion. I mean – uh, no, I can't get along with most Christians around here. <laughs> I don't know any that I get along with, you know. But they're our best friends that you know, I always told they were radical kind of people, you know, they're you know, kind of leftist acting people, but know that like libertarians, kind of conservative. Well, you know. libertarianism it it does it appeals to fringe people. It appeals to misfits. That's ah, one of not the, true. Libertarianism appeals to all kinds of folks. Most people are especially misfits like me and you because well. we don't because we don't because democracy is a little bit. It's easier for us to see the flaws in democracy when you're a hmm. misfit, and it's easier to see that that your candidate is never ever going to win. Um, 
when you're a misfit. I think the Free State Project attracts lots of misfits. I think that's true. I think that's true, uh, for better or for worse. Well, and we like to talk about conspiracy stuff, all kinds of stuff like that. Well, Matthew, but I appreciate these people when you hear about that they're like leftists and all, but because everyone we've met, they're all pretty good. Okay, well, cool, man. I appreciate the the personal dis, uh, discussion there, your personal experience with Scientologists. Thank you for the call tonight. Uh, I've never heard they were leftists or rightists or anything like that. I've actually never heard anything about the political beliefs of Scientologists. I imagine they vary. I mean, you know, there are people who call themselves Christian who are some of them vote Democrat, some of them vote Republican, some of them are Libertarian. Um, so I don't think that a particular religious belief system necessarily entails that that individual is going to have a specific political belief system. Yeah, I think of Scientology as having a lot of Hollywood people in it, which suggests a lot of leftists. That's what they're known for, I guess. Um, but the thing with Scientology, and we've, we've talked in detail about Scientology uh, off and on on Free Talk Live over the years, we are actually uh, originally in Sarasota, Florida, which is not far away from Clearwater in uh, the Tampa Bay area, and that is where they have like their base of operations. There's so many Scientologists in Clearwater; uh, it's pretty hard to walk down the street without bumping into one of them. Fascinating, uh, from what I understand. I don't actually live there, and I've never been there, but that's just what I've heard. And there was a few nights where the Scientologists we were on in Tampa on WFLA. And so the Scientologists were able to listen to us cr criticizing their religion, and they ca they called in. So that was that was very interesting. But the big concern I have with Scientology, like a lot of religions, is um, and specifically in Scientology, how they're bilking people for for a lot of money. Like it's uh, you you have to pay money to advance in the religion. Uh huh. It's not like you know. Other religions where you can just get the holy book of whatever Quran or the Bible or whatever, you know, study it on your own volition or have a, a, a study group or something like that. that. That doesn't cost a whole lot of money. But to advance in your knowledge in Scientology and your rank in the church, you have to pay. You have to give the church all kinds of money. And to me, that just kind of reeks of uh, corruption. Sure. That doesn't. That's not an indictment on the individuals involved or the uh, the beliefs, whatever they may be. Just there's some things that are kind of weird. Let's continue here. We've got Richard. He's in Austin, Texas. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Richard. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, you guys are about the twentieth show I've called on this subject, and it seems like everybody's afraid of it for some reason. So I'll give you guys a shot. Okay. Uh, there's a video out there and it's well put together. It's done by a Mr. William Peppers, Dick Gregory, and Steve Coakley. Some very unlikely people got together on this. And it's backed up by Representative Cynthia McKinney, Judge Joe Brown, and even uh, Martin III have all looked at this and, and they all agree with what it's depicting is that... All right, so what is, yeah, what is it? It's depicting that Jesse Jackson and Billy Giles, the one of the reverends that likes to go around every year bragging about how he was one of the last three people to spend quality time with uh, Martin Luther King his last minute. And it shows that they were all involved in the assassination of Martin Luther King. And they Whoa. even had a secret trial. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty revealing. They even had a secret trial that you guys have heard of the church hearings, no doubt. The I church hearings. Yeah, look that up. The church. I tell you what, I know you're running out of time. It's all over YouTube. It's so just to, there was recently like a civil case, I think, that was concluded about the murder of uh, Martin Luther King. And when I say recently, I mean like 2001. So, so you're saying the allegation is that Jesse Jackson was somehow involved in the killing of Martin Luther King? Did I misunderstand you, or is that what you what you were saying? Well, it's more than just involved. It would have never went down without his participation and another reverend named Billy Giles. And oh it's very well in the. I, I, let me give you the documentary before I run out of time. Before I wait too late, it's called Jesse Jackson killed Martin Luther King, and there's several versions of it. Now, Dick Gregory, he's a prominent civil rights uh, 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 personality. He's, he marched with Martin Luther King and a lot of whole lot of other people. What was the he, motivation? Was it uh, was it that you know, what's the speculative motivation? Was it that Jesse Jackson wanted the spotlight, and they, f and they figured he'd. Uh, ice Martin Luther King to, to get it? Well, yeah, of course, it's much more complicated than that because, of, you know, the FBI and everybody else had to be involved. They had Memphis several PD. There, but, yeah, Jesse was perfect because he was 
you know, ambitious enough to go through with it. But uh, wow. they want to go Well, we are unfortunately out of time, Richard, but thank you for the call tonight. And, of course, you know, did Louis Farrakhan uh, have anything to do with the killing of Malcolm X? There's a, you know, certainly a possibility of that as well, from what I understand. Uh, so we are out of time for tonight, and we will see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and welfare, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. You Come see, to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, December 16th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.35 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,212 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $337. Antiwar.com reports Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with Secretary of State John Kerry, pressing for a U.S. veto on the assorted U.N. resolutions coming up on the subject of peace talks. Two competing resolutions are looming, one being pushed by Jordan on behalf of the Palestinians, giving Israel two years to withdraw from the occupied West Bank. France is pushing an alternative text, which simply pushes for a two-year timetable for the resumption of the peace process. France sees a U.S. veto of the Jordan version as inevitable and says they hope their version is one that people can get behind. Netanyahu is lobbying against both, but pushing harder against the French version, claiming any conditions on Israel would threaten stability. Though U.S. officials have insisted they have made no decisions on vetoes yet, they traditionally veto anything Israel objects to, and Israeli Strategic Affairs Minister Yuval Steinitz expressed confidence in comments over the weekend that the U.S. would continue that trend. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports heavily armed Australian police stormed a Sydney cafe early on Tuesday morning and freed terrified hostages being held there at gunpoint in a dramatic end to a 16-hour siege in which two captives and the attacker were killed. 
Police would investigate whether the two hostages were killed by the gunman or died in the crossfire. That according to the police commissioner for the state of New South Wales. Authorities have not publicly identified the gunman, but a police source named him as Man Haran Moniz, an Iranian refugee and self-styled sheik known for sending hate mail to the families of Australian troops killed in Afghanistan. He 